after an historic weekend filled with triumph, victory, and glory for many, yet filled with failure, pain, and suffering for others. The time to look at the past is behind us, and when one door closes, the backlash begins. Falling short in an epic return, the prodigal son seeks redemption against one of the fastest rising stars ever to exist. A dominating fighter meets four worthy challengers, but only one woman can leave as the champion. Five soldiers of war enter the battleground looking to obtain top contendership for gold. The franchise player seeks his 17th trip to the top of the mountain, but standing in his way is a warrior they call the Chosen One, who is not looking to let any mortal man take away his destiny. A year-long story filled with pit stops of heartbreak and brutality writes its final chapter. Two men with a disdain for each other like no other meet one final time. It's all or nothing when these former friends fight until their final breath inside hell in a cell. Tonight, the backlash begins. For some, it will be a whole new beginning, but for others, it will all come to an end. Who has what it takes to be amongst the gods? Who has what it takes to battle with absolutely no mercy? It's time to close out the path and travel down new horizons. And it starts here tonight at Backlash. With championships and careers on the line, we welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, to the first live premiere event of the season. Welcome to the Target Center in Minneapolis. Welcome to WWE Backlash. The following is an elimination match. Making his way to the ring from Colorado Springs, Colorado, weighing in at 273 pounds, the almighty Bobby Lashley. And what a way to kick things off tonight in Minneapolis. The five-man elimination matchup to determine the number one contender for the WWE Championship. Of course, later tonight in your main event, it is hell in a cell, loser leaves Raw between the Viper Randy Orton and the original bro Matt Riddle. They will write the final chapter in a year long story and the WWE Championship will be decided. But when they come out on the other end, who will be awaiting them on the horizon? We're gonna find out right here, right now at WWE Backlash. Five men enter, but only one man can leave as the last man standing, and ultimately, the number one contender for either Matt Riddle or Randy Orton. Bobby Lashley the first to enter, but here comes the prize fighter, Kevin Owens. No Sami Zayn in sight tonight. Owens has got to go it alone. And from Marieville, Quebec, Canada, weighing in at 266 pounds. Kevin Owens! Well, remember this past Monday night on Raw, Kevin Owens and Karrion Cross teaming up in that big time tag team main event against Bobby Lashley and Sheamus. Kevin Owens and Cross picking up the huge victory, but it was after the matchup that really told the story and really gave us a preview of what tonight is going to all be about. And that's absolute chaos. The beast incarnate Brock Lesnar arriving on the scene for the first time since WrestleMania and laying waste to Karrion Cross and Kevin Owens with multiple F5s in the middle of that squared circle. We talked about it on Raw. We'll say it again tonight. I expect nothing but anarchy in the arena between these five superstars, especially with the prize that is on the line, the number one contendership for the world's most richest prize, the WWE title. And an eerie presence has come over the target center as Karrion Cross, also known as the Harbinger of Doom, enters the prey. You remember how all five men qualified for this matchup tonight. Three of them were given access due to their victories back at WrestleMania in February. Karrion Cross was one of them. 
He defeated Rob Van Dam back on the grandest stage of them all in the Extreme Rules match. You remember also at WrestleMania, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn defeated AJ Styles at Edge in that long-awaited tag team grudge match. Brock Lesnar defeated Omos in that first time ever bout on WrestleMania Saturday. And as for the other two men in this matchup, Bobby Lashley and Sheamus both had to earn their way into this match with qualifying victories the last few weeks on Raw. Bobby Lashley surviving Big E and Braun Strowman in that hoss fight of a triple threat. And then two weeks ago on Monday Night Raw, Sheamus with a big time victory over the visionary, Seth freaking Rollins. As we mentioned, Karrion Cross and Kevin Owens with that win this past Monday night. It was a few weeks ago as well in that WrestleMania rematch that Karrion Cross defeated Rob Van Dam for the second time in a row. Momentum certainly on the side of the harbinger of doom here in World Wrestling Entertainment. And I gotta say, you got five massive egos inside of that ring and certainly five dangerous superstars. Whoever survives Hell in a Cell tonight and walks away of Minneapolis, the WWE Champion, is not gonna have an easy task in the near future. Whether you're Matt Riddle or whether you're Randy Orton, you got Bobby Lashley, Kevin Owens, Karrion Cross, Sheamus and Brock Lesnar all vying for the WWE Championship. And it could only be one man. Imagine the chaos that these men are gonna have to go through to be the last one standing. This is elimination, of course, pinfall or submissions. The only way to be eliminated in this matchup, count out and disqualification go out the window. Three men have entered, but here comes your next participant. And I'm checking my calendar here, and I believe tonight is specifically Fight Night. Sheamus is in Minneapolis. And representing the Brawling Brutes from Dublin, Ireland, weighing in at 267 pounds, the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus. Well, Sheamus recently recruited Ridge Holland from NXT as his new protege. They're calling themselves the Brawling Brutes, but as you see, Sheamus going in alone tonight. Same thing for Kevin Owens, no Sami Zayn, Karrion Cross, no Scarlet. All the secondaries, if you will, getting out of the way tonight because of the chaos that's about to ensue inside, and I got a feeling outside of the squared circle. And it is a homecoming here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, for the Beast Incarnate, the alpha male of our species and a former 10-time WWE Champion, Brock Lesnar, back in action for the first time since WrestleMania Saturday. And from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing in at 295 pounds, Brock Lesnar. We said it before, we will say it again. Who was the last man standing this past Monday Night on Raw? You were looking at him. Karrion Cross and Kevin Owens may have defeated Lashley and Sheamus in that tag team matchup, but Brock Lesnar was the only man on his two feet inside of that ring when Raw went off the air. One at five to Karrion Cross, two to the prize fighter Kevin Owens, and Brock Lesnar left Raw with a smile on his feet, uh, on his face, excuse me. The Beast Incarnate laser focused tonight as he returns to Minneapolis, his hometown, and what an opportunity at stake for all five of these men. What better way to kick off our first live premiere event of the season? We want to thank you for joining us here at the Target Center in Minneapolis, Sunday night, April the 16th, 2023. Certainly going to be a night that we will never, ever forget. But it's about that time to kick things off. Five man elimination matchup. The last man standing becomes the number one contender for the WWE Championship, and we are underway. All five men in the ring at one time. Again, pinfall or submission, the only way to be eliminated in this match. Count out disqualification, go out the window. We're gonna do our best to keep up with the action here, but God only knows the chaos that will ensue throughout this contest. As you see, Lesnar throwing Lashley, Sheamus taking care of Cross, Owens coming behind. All-out mayhem in this match. 
As Carey and Cross look at him on the outside. Again, no disqualifications. And Cross already grabbing those steel steps. As Lesnar, that underhook on Lashley. And now Kevin Owens trying to sneak up on the Beast Incarnate. Carey and Cross already has got one steel steps apart. Looks like he's going for the other. Carry and Cross has obviously got a game plan in mind, and he's looking to use his surroundings here tonight to a fullest advantage. Meanwhile, Seamus Cross and Lesnar, excuse me, Seamus Kevin Owens and Lesnar in the ring right now. And there's already been mayhem, and we are what, a minute into this thing? A lot of action to keep up with, and bodies are going to be flying left and right. Carnage will ensue, but we expect nothing less. Seamus going for the first elimination here on Lashley. You got to believe it's going to be. A hard-fought victory, if you will, at least in that moment, if any eliminations occur. Brock Lesnar on the outside of the ring with Kevin Owens. I'm sure Kevin Owens has not forgotten about those two F5s this past Monday Night on Raw. As Sheamus grabbing those steel steps, looks like he's got his eyes set on the Beast Incarnate at ringside. And one to Kevin Owens as well, and takes out Lesnar. Man, I thought we were going to get Violent, if you will, in our main event tonight when it's Hell in the Cell, but obviously we're doing so early. This is only the first of the five participant chaos tonight, as later on we will have the five woman elimination matchup for the WWE Women's Championship. While Lesnar, half Nelson, or excuse me, Saeed on the outside to Sheamus, inside of the ring, Lashley and Cross have been brawling away with each other, trying to eliminate Kerry and Cross, but he gets the shoulder up. Oh, wait a minute. A lot of action to call. Lashley just took out Lesnar, and Kevin Owens, at least for a moment, looked like he was going to bring in a table. Well, Lashley goes to Suplex City in the ring on behalf of the Beast Incarnate. Arian Cross on the apron. Brock Lesnar taking care of him. And just to mention, ladies and gentlemen, these, these men can brawl around ringside all they want, but the eliminations must occur inside of the squared circle. This is not false count anywhere. Certainly, as we've already seen, no count outs, no disqualifications. Lesnar and Sheamus one-on-one -on -one in the ring right now. It's a one-on-one -on -one match I'd love to see down the line. Lesnar, you see he hooked the leg on Sheamus, and now going in for the cover. Referee a little bit out of position here. Can't blame him. So much action, he's got to keep his eyes on. Should have hired five referees to keep up with these five men. Meanwhile, Kevin Owens with a pinfall on Bobby Lashley. A two count there, but the almighty gets the shoulder up. Got to believe Lashley and Sheamus are coming into this thing. A little extra motivated after that loss on Monday Night Raw. There's Kevin Owens pinning the Almighty inside of that ring. Both those men lacking a little bit less momentum. Opposed to their adversaries here tonight. Oh, Karrion Cross, Karrion Cross trying to eliminate Brock Lesnar. And I need a one count there. Lesnar got to have the hometown advantage tonight, of course. Not looking to come up short in Minneapolis. But Cross and Lesnar still going at it. Well, Sheamus has got a steel chair on the outside. Carrying Cross, suplex to Lesnar in the ring. And you see the Harbinger of Doom immediately goes into the cover, but to no avail. All five men back in the ring, at least for a moment. Meanwhile, Brock Lesnar, look at the strength out of the Beast Incarnate. Kevin Owens is no light man inside of that ring, and Lesnar just threw him over top and down to the canvas with ease. Meanwhile, Owens back up. Look at those. Uh, Super kick there. Not sure if he landed all of it. Lesnar's back on his feet. But nonetheless, the matchup continues. No eliminations thus far. We're only a few minutes into this thing. But these five superstars, hell, this could go an hour inside of that ring. God only knows. Sheamus probably the smartest man in the arena right now, well, at least for a moment. Might not be a bad strategy to try to stay on the outskirts, be the odd man out, and rest and recuperate while the rest of these superstars, excuse me, just beat each other to smithereens. Try to take advantage, if you will, of an opportune seat when you find another superstar down and out. Aaron Cross trying to get his wits about him on the outside of the ring. Lashley and Sheamus going at it. Hell, I'm sure Sheamus is a little pissed off at Bobby Lashley for losing that tag team matchup on Raw. Meanwhile, Karrion Cross trying to do all he can to keep the beast down. A steel chair to the back. It's cut in half by Lashley in the corner. Now we got Lesnar and Sheamus going at it. All five men 
There's only one speed in this matchup, and that's pedal to the metal, full steam ahead. And you really can't slow down. You really can't necessarily wrestle your style of match, as you'll hear us say from now and then. You got so many bodies in there, you got to keep up with. It's hard to have eyes in the back of your head. You got four other superstars to focus on, and you got to protect yourself. Sheamus back inside the squared circle. All five men in, at least for a moment. Brock Lesnar, belly to belly suplex on the Celtic Warrior. Who is going to be the first man to fall in this five man elimination matchup? Come on, Brock Lesnar. Oh no, going for a German suplex on Sheamus. He's locked the hips, locked the hands, I should say. Looking to take Sheamus to Suplex City. Meanwhile, Bobby Lashley's covering Karrion Cross. Cross kicks out. Lesnar covering Sheamus. And there he, no! Sheamus got the shoulder up. I was about ready to call it. I thought the Celtic Warrior was out of this thing. Meanwhile, Lashley's got the hurt lock in on Kevin Owens and Lesnar at the same time simultaneously. Kamara on Sheamus. And Sheamus taps out the Celtic Warrior, the first casualty of your opening matchup tonight. Anarchy in the arena. Kevin Owens able to escape the hurt lock, but Sheamus not able to escape the Kimura. Rock Lesnar sends Sheamus to the showers, and we are down to four, and maybe down to three in a minute, because Brock Lesnar is manhandling the almighty Bobby Lashley inside the middle of that ring. Whole lot of action to keep up with tonight as we kick off our live premiere event Target Center, Minneapolis, Minnesota for Backlash. Look at Lesnar, belly to belly on Lashley. Darian Cross back in the ring as Lesnar continues the onslaught of the Almighty. Oh man! Cher shot right to the head of Brock. And Karrion Cross ruling the ring at least for a moment here as Bobby Lashley takes down Lesnar. It's really hard to get the momentum and Quite frankly, sustain it throughout this matchup with so many bodies are moving left and right. Wait a minute, Brock Lesnar, Kevin Owens in the ring. Owens, oh, raked the eyes of Brock. That man just pissed off the beast incarnate. Brock Lesnar here, suplex, hooks the leg, right on the chair, into the cover on Kevin Owens. Will there be any escape? Kevin no! Has been eliminated. Kevin Owens eliminated by Brock Lesnar. Lesnar is ruling the ring in his hometown tonight. First he tapped out Sheamus, then the suplex hook of the leg on the chair, and Kevin Owens had nowhere to go. We are down to three men in this contest. Brock Lesnar is already a dangerous man, and now with a steel chair in hand, at least for a moment, makes it all that more scary. We are down to Lesnar, Lashley, and Cross. One of these three men will become the number one contender for the WWE title. And I think it wouldn't be a bad idea. Obviously, two men that don't like each other, but Harry and Cross and Lashley may want to team up and take up the odds on favorite right now. And that's Brock Lesnar in his hometown, the Beast Incarnate. He's got two of two eliminations so far. But obviously, Lashley's got other plans as he goes to eliminate Kerry and Cross, and Cross gets the shoulder up. Lesnar's tackling down Bobby Lashley. You got three heavyweights in there. Oh man, and Lesnar's just getting caught up in the top rope, and now he's in a precarious situation. But don't count out the beast any given day of the week, twice on Sunday. And a knee by Cross takes down Lashley as Lesnar rolls to the outside to try to get his wits about him. As we mentioned, I don't think it'd be a bad idea for Cross and Lashley to team up against Lesnar, but clearly that is not in their forte tonight. They just want to eliminate each other and be the last man standing by any means necessary. The almighty and the harbinger of doom going at it. Lashley, nice slam on Cross. Not going to go for the cover just yet. The almighty's wheels are still turning. You see Brock Lesnar right now, up and still a little shaky at ringside, trying to get his wits about him, and really just trying to rest and recuperate while Lashley and Cross beat down each other inside of the ring. 
Now what's Lashley doing? You see Bobby Lashley's really picking apart Cross. Had that scoop slam, went after the leg, into the cover. Will that do it? Cross gets the shoulder up. And this match remains a triple threat, at least for the moment. And Lashley now has got his eyes glued, locked in center on Karrion Cross, going for the hurt lock here. This is the move that qualified Bobby Lashley for this matchup tonight. He has got it wrenched in. Will Karrion Cross escape, or will he tap out and seal his own fate tonight at Backlash? Lashley has ragged on this man, which is no easy task. Three heavyweights inside of that ring. Oh, Karrion Cross! look at the strength, the guts of Cross to muscle out of it. A Brock Lesnar back into the ring, and a shot to Cross, and one for good measures on Lashley. And just like that, Brock Lesnar is back in the top of the top of the pool. Excuse me. Lesnar in the ring. Bobby Lashley. The hell does Bobby Lashley got in mind? Oh, he's bringing in a table. There's still one that was unused at ringside by Kevin Owens. Lesnar taking care of Cross. Bobby Lashley in, and Lesnar having none of it. The hell is it going to take to secure two more eliminations in this match and have our final number one contender? What a neck breaker by Lashley. Not only was it on the chair, but on the edges of the table as Karrion Cross now brings in. Well, it looks like he had plans for another table, but they have changed his idea. Lesnar, German suplex release on the almighty. Looks like Lesnar wanted the table. Karrion Cross, however, back into the ring. The fight continues. Counter by Brock and another shot. All three of these heavyweights throwing haymakers right now. Who is going to leave this match on top of the food chain? What a clothesline to Lashley. How many falls these last few minutes have been on top of that chair? That chair is all kinds of contorted inside of that ring right now. As Brock Lesnar sets up that table. He's only got damage in mind as Karrion Cross, however, I think wants to put Brock through the table and Lesnar able to get out of it. Arian Cross able to avoid disaster, at least for a moment. Lesnar just continuing to throw those haymakers at the harbinger of doom. Bobby Lashley back in, looking to avoid disaster. There's a counter by Brock. Oh, wait a minute, Lesnar, he's got Lashley up in the air. By the beast and toward it into the cover. Will that do it? No, Bobby Lashley secures his spot in this matchup at least for another moment. Lashley kicks out of Brock Lesnar's best offense, the F5, and somehow the Almighty. Well, he was about to get back to his feet. Karrion Cross, however, making sure that wasn't in the forte. But Bobby Lashley, somehow, some way, muscling himself back into this matchup, the strength to take down Karrion Cross into the cover. Will this be your third elimination? It is. Lashley eliminates Cross, and we are down to two men. The Almighty, the Beast Incarnate, Brock versus Bobby. Who is going to be the last man standing? Who is going to be the number one contender for the WWE Championship? And Lesnar setting his eyes on that table. Lashley was able to kick out of the F5 a few moments ago, but how much more does Bobby Lashley have left in the tank? Holding the almighty up against the wood. Oh, but there's a counter by Lashley. Bobby Lashley may be looking to put Brock Lesnar through that table with a suplex here. No. Making, Lo excuse me, making Brock Lesnar ribs first up against the canvas. It's just been a brawl between these heavyweights these last few moments. And now Lesnar suplex on Lashley, hooks the leg, similar to how he did to Kevin Owens earlier. Elects not to go for the cover just yet. I think Brock Lesnar is still eyeing up the wood of the table. Lesnar wants to put the exclamation point in this match. Through the table goes Lashley. And after an F5 and a table, it all secures the number one contendership for Brock Lesnar. What a way to kick off Backlash here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. 
five men, but only one man left standing. And it's a hometown homecoming for the new number one contender, the Beast Incarnate, the Alpha Male, Brock Lesnar. Here is your winner, Brock Lesnar. Whoever survives Hell in a Cell has got a date with destiny. Brock Lesnar is the last man standing, and he's coming for the WWE title. Do you want access to a bonus Universe Mode episode every single month? Well, now you have the chance. Click the Join button down below and become a NOAA Nation Gaming channel member. Not only will you receive one bonus Universe Mode episode every single month, but you'll receive access to exclusive badges, emojis, discounted merchandise, and more. Become a Premium Pass channel member today and don't miss out on these exclusive perks. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. That is for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. It is time for your first championship match of the evening. Representing Monday Night Raw, the Intercontinental Championship is on the line. And here comes your number one contender, a man who is no stranger to Intercontinental Gold a former champion in his own right, as well as a former United States champion, tag team champion, NXT champion, Royal Rumble match winner, the King of Strong Style, Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura earned his way to backlash tonight by outlasting three rounds of a number one contenders tournament over the last month on Monday Night Raw. He defeated Happy Corbin, Damian Priest of the Judgment Day, and just this past Monday night, in an incredible matchup, defeated Cedric Alexander in the finals. Shinsuke Nakamura certainly out to prove himself all over again ever since being drafted to Monday Night Raw and wants to regain a championship he has held before, the Intercontinental title. And Nakamura is going to do it his way by earning it pound for pound, strong style inside of that ring. And what a comparison, what a matchup with his opponent tonight, the invincible Ilya Dragunov. Nakamura and Dragunov sure to deliver a hard-hitting affair in moments here in Minneapolis. Certainly not going to be one we're going to be forgetting about anytime soon. But here comes the man defending the Intercontinental Championship for the first time since winning it back on WrestleMania Saturday. The former NXT United Kingdom Champion and the Intercontinental Champion, the Invincible Ilya Dragunov. Dragunov won the gold by defeating the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne in a hard-hitting clash on WrestleMania Saturday night back in February. Dragunov sat back and watched this number one contenders tournament play out to determine a worthy challenger. And of course, Ilya Dragunov not a man who will step down to anybody inside of that ring. Dare I say, one of the most feared superstars in the Monday Night Raw locker room. Very young in his WWE career, but already accomplishing so much. And Ilya Dragunov, one of the hardest hitters inside of that squared circle. Nakamura, no stranger to getting punched in the face or uppercutted or headbutted, but Dragunov may do all of that better than anybody. This is going to be a big matchup here tonight for the prestigious Intercontinental title, a championship that has been held by so many greats. Triple H, The Rock, Bret the Hitman Hart, Chris Jericho. The list goes on and on. And Ilya Dragunov added his name to that prestigious Hall of Fame list back at WrestleMania. Shinsuke Nakamura, however, wants to do it all over again here tonight in Minneapolis. First championship match of the evening here at Backlash. The Intercontinental Gold is on the line. Let's send things down to the ring for your official pre-match introductions. Introducing the challenger from Kyoto, Japan. Weighing in at 220 pounds, Shinsuke Nakamura.
and his opponent from Moscow, Russia, weighing in at 187 pounds, he is the WWE Intercontinental Champion, Ilya Dragunov. What is certainly an international affair, and we wouldn't have it any other way here tonight at Backlash for that prestigious Intercontinental Championship. The King of Strong Style versus the Invincible One. The number one contender, Shinsuke Nakamura versus the champion, Ilya Dragunov. Your first title on the line here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's already been a hellacious night and it's about to continue with some good old fashioned professional wrestling. And here we go. Dragunov takes Nakamura over right off the bell. Again, Nakamura outlasted three very different superstars and three very different matchups to earn his way to Backlash tonight. Happy Corbin in the first round, a hard hitting affair with Damian Priest in the semis. And definitely a clash of styles this past Monday night on Raw against Cedric Alexander. Already Nakamura going for those covers. He wants to defeat Ilya Dragunov or at the very least get in the head with those early pinfalls here. You see Dragunov showcasing some of his hard-hitting abilities, trying to prove to the King of Strong style that Dragunov can play any game inside of that ring. Dragunov and Pete Dunne certainly put on a showcase for the ages at WrestleMania, that United Kingdom battle before, between two former NXT UK champs. One of the matches that stole the weekend back at WrestleMania in February. Dragunov had a bloody forehead and all, and he came out on the other side of the Intercontinental title. That shows the lengths that Dragunov will go to walk away of this ring with said gold. Now Nakamura in advantage. Down goes Dragunov. We're only about a minute into this thing, but you see it's been already back and forth between the champion and challenger, and quite frankly, I expect nothing less. This is gonna be athletic competition, and the better man's gonna walk away as the Intercontinental Champion tonight, and there you go again, with the momentum swinging back and forth between Dragunov and Nakamura, and that elevation lariat by the Invincible One. Both men were atop of NXT at one point, Former NXT Champion versus former NXT United Kingdom Champion. But look at Dragunov there, slingshot lariat. And you see in back-to-back -back maneuvers there, Dragunov proven why we have already told all of you here watching that he is one of the hardest hitters inside of the Monday Night Raw locker room. And Nakamura, we don't call him the King of Strong Style just because he can dish out a blow. He could certainly take one as well. And I'm Nakamura, look at this. Going for the kill early. Going for that arm bar on Dragunov. And Dragunov able to get out of it, but you gotta believe Nakamura there. Once again, didn't really believe he was gonna put down Dragunov already, but just trying to get in the head of the champion who muscles up Nakamura and down he goes. No waste in motion between champion and challenger tonight. And now again, Nakamura sending Dragunov inside out. Back and forth, hold for a hold, maneuver for maneuver here for the Intercontinental Championship. And Nakamura, smart to drag Dragunov away from the ropes, but it may have given the champion time to recover here, and yes, it does. You also gotta believe, you know, Nakamura, we're stay, sitting here saying that maybe he's just trying to get to the head of Dragunov with some of these early pinfalls and going for the arm bar, but at the same time, Nakamura's had a hellacious schedule over the last few weeks, competing in the number one contenders tournament. There's a chance Nakamura may not be coming to this matchup 100% and he knows it. And maybe that is why Nakamura's trying to put away Dragunov early. You saw a moment ago, it looked like he was going for the King Shasa, but Dragunov was able to avoid it. Now sits out with that power bomb there, and Nakamura gets the shoulder up. These two men have had their foot on the gas pedal ever since the bell sounded, and they are not letting up ever since. Nakamura out of the ring trying to avoid the champion's onslaught. But Dragunov right there to keep things going. Nakamura avoids whatever Dragunov had in mind. Collar and elbow brings us back to a stalemate, and Nakamura with the arm drag on the invincible Ilya Dragunov. You gotta wonder, all seven men who competed in the number one contenders tournament, I'm sure all, all of them who failed to get to this spot tonight are watching this matchup with a keen eye. Everybody in that Raw locker room would love to have a shot at the winner of this matchup for the Intercontinental Championship. On Dragunov here, look at this. 
One lariat, make it a dose, squashing Nakamura in the corner. And not done yet as Dragunov, a beautiful discus chop, Nakamura goes down, and now into the cover, trying to retain the title, and only a one count there. Again, not to keep repeating ourselves, but it's very important. Nakamura not only knows how to give out those strikes, but he certainly knows how to absorb them and keep fighting, especially in high-profile matches such as this. Championship opportunities don't come around every day, and you got to make the most of them. Nakamura's looking to do that right here tonight. Dragunov sends Nakamura back into the corner where he just laid him out with two lariats moments ago, but Nakamura there. Had whatever Dragunov had in mind scouted. A couple of elbows and now a knee right to the heart of the champion. And now Nakamura, a little uncharacteristic here for the King of Strong Style. Any means necessary, however, to walk away champion. Into the cover off the elbow. Dragunov gets the shoulder up. You see Nakamura really lined up those maneuvers in perfect order. A couple of knees to the chest, followed it up with an elbow. And now Nakamura with Dragunov overhead. Could have been looking for that Death Valley driver that we've seen him execute throughout the tournament. But Dragunov clearly has been paying attention to Nakamura's moveset and had it scouted, at least for the moment. Nakamura back into the corner. Dragunov's wheels are spinning here. On the top rope and just ragdoll and Nakamura. And again, what is the condition of Shinsuke after these last few weeks of action? Drag it off, however, into the corner. Here comes the torpedo. Head butt to Nakamura. Will that do it? Drag it off, retains the title. A great intercontinental championship matchup. Nakamura gave it his all. But only one man can leave the Intercontinental Champion, and that's the man who walked in with the gold, Ilya Dragunov. Here is your winner, and still WWE Intercontinental Champion, Ilya Dragunov. The first championship defense in the title reign of Ilya Dragunov in the books. Nakamura will live to fight another day, but you gotta wonder who is gonna be next to step up to the Invincible One for that prestigious Intercontinental Championship. Well, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next here in Minneapolis, it is the WrestleMania rematch. Austin Theory, Cody Rhodes. Theory defeated Cody Rhodes back at WrestleMania, but the American Nightmare has not forgotten. He does not want to move on on Friday Night SmackDown until he writes the wrong of the grandest stage of them all. Will Cody Rhodes succeed, or will Austin Theory spoil yet another win for Cody Rhodes? It is time for the WrestleMania rematch and your first matchup apart of Friday Night SmackDown. A-Towns, Austin Theory takes on the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. WrestleMania was a classic. Let's repeat it here in Minneapolis. The following is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 220 pounds, Austin Theory. For Austin Theory, this matchup tonight is about a few things. First off, it's about proving that his win over Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania was not a fluke. Now, are people questioning that? Not necessarily. Austin Theory was the WWE Champion from August 7th till September the 10th of last year. Obviously a short reign, but in the young career of Austin Theory, that speaks volumes. But when Austin Theory failed to become the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship, and Cody Rhodes was looking for this WrestleMania rematch, Theory saw it as an opportunity to silence the naysayers, to put himself in a position to be undoubtedly the man next in line to challenge for the World Heavyweight Championship. But for the opponent, Cody Rhodes, it's about righting the wrong of WrestleMania. The American Nightmare is back here at Backlash tonight. Cody Rhodes has not forgotten about Saturday night, February 25th, 2023. The night Austin Theory spoiled the prodigal son's return. Cody Rhodes has been victorious as of late over Johnny Gargano. This past Friday night on SmackDown, just 48 hours ago, over a win over J.D. McDonough. But tonight, 
He looks to get the victory over all day, Austin Theory. And his opponent from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 220 pounds, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. We said for Austin Theory, this match was about silencing the naysayers. But for Cody Rhodes, this match is about silencing his own self-doubt. He came into the grandest stage of them all, had an instant classic, against one of the fastest rising stars in WWE history, ultimately came up short. Cody Rhodes, as we mentioned, he may have been victorious these last few weeks on Friday night, but for Cody, he cannot move on mentally, and he cannot move to the next stage of this WWE return until, in his mind, he writes the wrong of WrestleMania. WrestleMania was supposed to be a homecoming, was supposed to be a night where Cody Rhodes raised his hand up high in victory. Austin Theory was the man who spoiled that ideal return for Cody. Tonight they run it back, right here, right now, in Minneapolis. Austin Theory was hoping, wait a minute, Cody Rhodes, schoolboy here on Austin Theory to steal the victory early, and Theory gets the shoulder up. Cody Rhodes, I'm sure, is gonna come out swinging tonight with a whole different game plan than WrestleMania. Again, Cody Rhodes and Austin Theory tore down the house at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa Bay. But even with blood flowing from the forehead, Austin Theory was the victor on that night. As he takes down Cody, and now a pinfall there. Cody Rhodes gets the shoulder up. As we were about to say, Austin Theory originally hoped to be challenging Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight title tonight. Reignited that rivalry with John Cena. About a month ago on Friday Night SmackDown, the number one contender's matchup. He came up short. And as we were mentioning for Theory, he looks at this matchup as a way to defeat Cody Rhodes yet again, prove that WrestleMania wasn't a fluke, and ultimately put himself in the eyes of upper management as the man who should be next in line to challenge for the World Heavyweight title. Austin Theory's been chomping at the bit to challenge for a World Championship again ever since he lost the WWE title after that just over a month reign, as we mentioned, back in 2022. And really, for Austin Theory, he was searching for a road to WrestleMania. You remember coming up short to become the number one contender for the WWE title. He failed to win the Royal Rumble matchup as Cody Rhodes, suicide dive to the outside, takes out Theory. As we were mentioning, Theory failed to win the Royal Rumble matchup. He even set his sights on the Royal Rumble match winner, Matt Riddle and challenged him for his WrestleMania main event, which Theory came up short on that night. Theory was desperate for a spot at the grandest stage of them all and ultimately saw Cody Rhodes return as a spot in the spotlight on that night. And he made the most of it. Theory was hoping for a one-off, but now that WrestleMania hangover, if you will, spills over to Backlash here tonight. This matchup getting taken to the outside, at least for a moment. Cody Rhodes brings things back to the ring with a headlock takeover. Austin Theory going to the outside. Theory full of himself as ever. And you gotta wonder if Austin Theory is kind of looking at Cody Rhodes tonight in a bit of a lesser way. He might have been taking Rhodes more seriously at WrestleMania. If Theory comes into this lackadaisical because he knows he can defeat all, or excuse me, he knows he can defeat Cody Rhodes, well, Rhodes is gonna make quick advantage of that, and Cody's gonna come out the victor. Theory's gonna come into this match tonight with the same game plan if not a little bit adjusted, so Cody Rhodes doesn't predict it, that he had at WrestleMania. Of course, executed to fruition to come out victorious tonight. A little bit of back and forth so far, similar to what we saw in our Intercontinental Championship match from Raw moments ago. It's already been an awesome night here in Minneapolis at Backlash, and still so much more to come. Four championships still to be decided here tonight on pay-per-view. Now Theory just grounded and pounded on Cody Rhodes. Remember, it was Cody who threw out the open challenge, or excuse me, I should say just the straight-up challenge to Austin Theory for this WrestleMania rematch. We already mentioned all the reasons why Austin Theory saw the opportunity at hand. And of course, a nice pay-per-view payday. Always gonna do Austin Theory good. Loves to stroke that own ego. And now Theory pulling Cody Rhodes in with the clothesline. Cody Rhodes cannot allow Austin Theory to build up momentum. Nice block by Cody there at a clothesline. Tit for tat, the American Nightmare goes. 
Now Theory rolling to the outside again. Theory is really just trying to escape the onslaught of Cody Rhodes throughout this matchup. Back into the ring comes Theory. The American Nightmare lying in wait, and there's an elbow. And now Cody Rhodes going to give Theory a taste of his own medicine, throwing the closed fist to the forehead of Austin. Cody Rhodes remembers the blood that was flowing through Austin Theory's eyes and into his face at WrestleMania. Would love to recreate that picture tonight at Backlash, but there's a backbreaker right to the American Nightmare, and Rhodes able to survive another moment, but certainly some damage done. Austin Theory enjoying his own Andy work here tonight at the Target Center. Now he's got Cody Rhodes up, and what a maneuver there. And that is a maneuver that we have seen out of the Accolade, excuse me, the Cody Rhodes, the repertoire of Cody Rhodes. There we go. Theory trying to do anything he can to keep down the American Nightmare tonight, including going to the outside of the ring, and a missile drop kick takes down Rhodes. Austin Theory throwing caution into the wind. And quite, fr quite frankly, we can throw out the window. I guess the, no pun intended, but Theory we mentioned a few moments ago about if Austin Theory wasn't going to take Cody Rhodes as seriously as he was at WrestleMania. Theory obviously throwing a little bit of everything in the kitchen sink at Cody so far in this matchup. And now muscles up the American Nightmare, but never count out the son of a plumber. Rhodes may be on his comeback story here in WWE, but that's a former Intercontinental Champion, former Tag Team Champion inside of the squared circle right now, and a man who would love to one day challenge for the big gold belt that was held by his father many years ago. And Theory down and out in the corner, and Cody Rhodes has found himself for the driver's seat tonight in Minneapolis. Continuing with the offense, Simple but effective rushing leg sweep there. And down goes Austin Theory and Cody Rhodes again. Going to use that closed fist on Austin Theory. And now what has Cody got in mind? And to the outside of the ring. He's awaiting Austin Theory to get to his feet. What is going through the mind of Cody? Oh no! Suplex to the outside! Over the top rope and down to the floor. Cody Rhodes is reaching down in the bag of tricks and trying to do anything he can to right the wrong of WrestleMania. That was a hard landing there, but Austin Theory right back into it with that pump kick to Rhodes on the outside. What a maneuver by Cody moments ago. Suplex out of the ring to the floor here at the target center. But somehow, Austin Theory, you gotta give it up for the guts of this kid. There's a missile drop kick there. Theory's got that strength, but he's also got that agility. A full package inside of the ring. And oh no, there's a suplex. A little bit of a twang on that from Theory. A reversal by Cody. And a reversal by Theory. Goes for the lariat there, doesn't get all of it. Collar and elbow, oh no, he's got Cody in the air, could be going A-Town down, or at least a variation of it. And Cody Rhodes is down and out. Austin Theory into the cover. Will that do it? Not just yet. Theory wants to go 2-0 against Cody Rhodes, but he's got to keep fighting if he's going to do so. Cody Rhodes wants to even the score between himself and Theory. And a second backbreaker there. Tilt a whirl this time around. Cody back to the outside. Theory is going to the top rope again. We've seen him hit multiple missile drop kicks this time, the third time. Not a charm as Cody Rhodes finally had it scouted. Now just drops Theory with a re release suplex on the outside of the ring. And will that misstep by Theory go into the well too many times with those drop kicks? be his undoing in this matchup tonight is Backlash. Into the ring apron he goes. And Cody Rhodes taking his time here, still working over Theory, but obviously trying to catch his breath. And he might have just knocked the breath out of his opponent tonight, Senton off the apron right to the rib cage of the all-day superstar. And the American Nightmare broke the count, but is now heading back to the outskirts of the squared circle, where Theory is just trying to get to his feet. 
And here comes Rhodes, Bulldog. And the tides have certainly shifted in this matchup. But Cody's got to get it done inside of the ring. He's got to hear that bell. He's got to get the one, two, three in order to, once again, in his mind, right that wrong from the show of shows in February. I don't know what theory he had in mind there. He's trying to throw Cody off his game. He gets the barricade now. And oh no, Austin Theory reversal. Snap German on the outside. This match has been physical. It's been exhausting, I'm sure, for these two superstars. And they're laying it all in the ring. Oh, wait a minute, here comes Theory again. A signature drop kick. This time inside of the ring. And that may do it here. Count of two and Cody survives. A great WrestleMania rematch thus far. Certainly from the fans' perspective, we gotta be loving this here. But Austin Theory is taking control. Cody to his feet. Oh no, wait a minute. A-Town down officially. And Cody Rhodes may be seeing Stardust right now. No! Rhodes survives yet again. Austin Theory may have thrown his best shot. But his biggest mistake there may not have been continuing the offense. Took a moment to taunt his pleasure to the crowd. Cody tried to get back into this, but here comes Theory. Into the cover again. The American Nightmare able to kick out. You see, it really took a lot out of Rhodes to get the shoulder off the canvas that time. The damage is starting to take a toll on Cody tonight. At eight town down, almost did it. Rhodes was able to kick out, but at what cost? No pun intended, but Cody is truly running off adrenaline right now. And Cody trying to get back to his feet. Theory's locked and loaded. Oh my goodness, a crossroads on Cody Rhodes. Theory using the American Nightmares. Oh, move against him, but Cody gets out of it again. Austin Theory had to think up a new strategy. Cody survived A-Town down. Theory used Rhodes, own crossroads against him. But if any man knows how to survive it, it's the man who does it best. Oh no, Theory's got him up. Could have been going for that brain buster that ended things at WrestleMania, but Cody gets out of it and takes the leg down from Theory. And a little bit of that American dream, baby. And Cody Rhodes in control. And out to the up, to the top rope, elbow by Cody. I don't know if anybody wants to succeed more tonight at Backlash than the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. He has survived a little bit of everything from Austin Theory, even his own finishing maneuver. But Cody Rhodes wants to go from undesirable to undeniable. And a Verter Breaker may do just that. The same move that defeated Johnny Gargano a few weeks ago, but Cody Rhodes is looking to do what he does best, a crossroads on Theory. Victory for the American Nightmare. Well, the WrestleMania rematch certainly living up to the grandest stage of the mall showcase. Cody Rhodes came to Minneapolis with a mission and he executed it to fruition. The American Nightmare victorious under the bright lights of the Target Center here at Backlash. Here is your winner, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. WrestleMania may have been a disappointment for Cody Rhodes, but tonight he fixed it all up. He came to Minneapolis with a game plan and he got the job done. Theory tried to defeat Cody with his own maneuver, but it wasn't enough. Cody Rhodes outlasts the all-day superstar, and the American Nightmare walks away from Minneapolis with the American victory. What a match here at Backlash. What well, is time for yet another championship match here this evening? And the WWE World Tag Team titles are on the line. The challengers, Eric 
Ivar! The Viking Raiders! One year ago at this very event, the Viking Raiders walked in as the World Tag Team Champions and they defeated the two men who will go one-on-one -on -one in your main event later tonight, Matt Riddle and Randy Orton. The Viking Raiders almost to blame for the beginning of the end of RK Bro a year ago. But nonetheless, Eric and Ivar got a new mean streak about them. Their contracts with Raw expired. They moved over to Friday Night SmackDown. And since then, they have been wreaking havoc. Eric with that dominating victory over Mansoor a couple of weeks ago. And then the Viking Raiders solidifying their spots as number one contenders when Ivar dominated the one and only Ricochet two weeks ago on Friday Night SmackDown, absolutely pumbling the one and only and walked away with the victory. And you gotta wonder, the momentum of the champions tonight. As we mentioned, Ivar defeated Ricochet two weeks ago, but it was 48 hours ago on Friday Night SmackDown that the other half of the tag team champions, Mustafa Ali, went one-on-one -on -one with one half of Los Lotharios and Angel Garza. With a little help of Humberto Carrillo throughout the match, Angel upsetting Mustafa Ali in that matchup, which you gotta believe put Los Lotharios in line for the winners of this matchup and the tag team titles. It's gonna be very interesting to see the mindsets, the game plans of the champion, but here comes one half of the WWE World Tag Team Champions. You know, we have talked long and hard about how 2022 was a career resurgence for Mustafa Ali. And one year ago at this event, Ali was in tag team action with a man who we now know, Dominic Dijakovic, a part of Friday Night SmackDown. We unfortunately haven't seen him since the draft, but nonetheless, 2022, Ali raked up victories over Seth freaking Rollins all throughout the summer. Was even the United States champion, unfortunately, for a short reign in December. But Ali finding his footing again in 2023. This new pairing with the one and only Ricochet came together back in the winter through an Elimination Chamber qualifying matchup. Ali won that, excuse me, won that victory on that night, but mutual respect certainly gained. When the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic came about, Ali and Ricochet wanted their spot. They made their way to WrestleMania Saturday, defeated Dominic Dijakovic and his former tag team partner, Damian Priest, to win the 2023 Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. And of course, moved on to fight DIY and dethrone them for the gold just 24 hours later. But here comes Ali's tag team partner, the human highlight reel, the one, the only, Ricochet! Ricochet, no stranger to having gold around his waist. That man was the Cruiserweight Champion from June 26th of last year all the way up till January the 1st of this year at the Royal Rumble. And of course, waiting little to no time to get championship gold again, just under two months in 2023 for Ricochet to again with Ali by his side, win the 2023 Dusty Cup and then move on, to de move on to dethrone Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa on WrestleMania Sunday for the WWE World Tag Team titles. But with all that being said, we speculated already and we'll speculate again the recent singles losses for the Tag Team Champions. How is that playing into their mo momentum? How is it playing into their mindset? We will find out in due time in this contest. Nonetheless, the World Tag Team titles are on the line. Once again, let's send things down to the ring for your official pre-match introductions. The following contest is a tag team match set for one fall and is for the World Tag Team Championship. Introducing the challengers at a combined weight of 552 pounds, Ivar and Eric. The Viking Raiders! And their opponents at a combined weight of 372 pounds. They are the World Tag Team Champions, Mustafa Ali and Ricochet! The WWE World Tag Team Championships on the line. Ali and Ricochet got a lot of proof tonight. And of course, their championships are at stake. Eric and Ivar have been chomping at the bit to get back those World Tag Team titles. 
Once again, they held them from March of last year all the way up till SummerSlam on June 26th of 2022. They have had multiple opportunities to get the titles back, unfortunately have not gone their way, but will tonight be the night that the war rages on here in Minneapolis. Ali right off the opening bell, going high risk, high reward, if you will, on Ivar, but obviously the strength and size goes to the Viking Raiders tonight. Mustafa Ali just 48 hours ago had a physical matchup against Angel Garza, and as we mentioned, coming up short against one half of Los Lotharios. Ali and Ricochet got to put those losses out of their heads. They got to focus on the task at hand because if they don't, the Viking Raiders are going to, no pun intended, but raid over them and take away the World Tag Team titles tonight at Backlash. It's really a test of styles here in this match. Cruiserweights versus no doubt heavyweight, well, quite, quite frankly, super heavyweights in Ivar's case. Ivar going for the early cover, Ricochet breaking things up. But look at this, Ivar just grabbing a hold of the man he manhandled a few weeks ago on SmackDown. But Ali takes advantage with a pop-up tornado into the cover to retain the titles early, but only a one count. Ali and Ricochet really stole WrestleMania weekend. Walked away with the Dusty Cup and the World Tag Team titles. This is only what their sixth matchup as a team, the Viking Raiders have had many more, of course. They go back years as a tag team, not just in WWE, so certainly the experience in the hands of the challengers tonight as Eric just take, took Ricochet to the outside again. Oh, hell is breaking loose already in this matchup. Ivar going to the top rope. Mustafa Ali is on spaghetti legs. You see Ivar, I think, electing not to jump nearly halfway across the ring. But that misstep may have cost him, my goodness! You can hear that super kick down the street here in Minneapolis. Ali trying to turn the lights off on the war tonight. Not enough to keep Ivar down, but certainly enough to maybe break the nose of one half of the challengers. And now has got the bigger competitor in the corner. A couple of chops, a couple of overhand ones, just trying to break up the damage one move at a time on the challengers tonight now ali going to the top rope certainly where the champions feel most comfortable high and in the air and there's a cross body to take down ivar whatever ali had in mind there ivar able to break things up oh my goodness the discus leg lariat and a two count there, Ricochet saves the matchup, quite frankly saves the World Tag Team titles, but Ivar almost had this thing just a few minutes in, and there's a neck breaker by Ali off the reversal. We haven't even seen Eric and Ricochet tag into this matchup, and they've already gotten physical with each other on multiple occasions. Ivar's down, Ali's going to the top rope yet again. What does one half of the World Tag Team Champions got inside that mind of his, a simple yet effective ax hammer to take one half of the challengers off his feet, at least for a moment. The Viking Raiders, no strangers to going the distance in tag team matches. I mean, we have seen them put on multiple match of the year candidates just last year alone, whether it was with the Mysterios, or whether it was with Damian Priest and Dominic Dijakovic when they were teaming up on Monday Night Raw. Eric and Ivar, certainly not just Playing the gimmick, if you will. They know how to go to war, and they will do so until their last breaths inside of that ring. Mustafa Ali is in trouble right now, just rolling to the outside, trying to catch a breather. And Eric, oh, wait a minute, he's got his hands on Ali. Ivar, a cheap shot on the one and only. And the Viking Raiders just got a new edge about them as of late. They don't give a damn who you are, where you've been, what you're doing. They will run you over to get what they want. Ali countering out whatever Ivar had in mind. Tilt to whirl, head scissors takes him down at least for a moment. Ricochet outside. Ivar trying to go after him. Luckily, the one and only able to escape the grasp. Mustafa Ali inside of the ring. Drop kick. Barely even shook one half of the challengers. As the two men who started this matchup are still fighting inside of that ring. And a cover by Ivar to win the tag team titles. And Ricochet breaks things up. That pinfall was just in the tag team champion's territory. And once again, 
The two non-legal men inside the ring. Ali taking care of Eric, at least for a moment, but look at Ivar! Sending Ali for a ride. Ricochet takes care of Eric. Ivar now goes behind on the highlight reel, of SmackDown, and a backbreaker to the champion. This matchup has been chaos, and certainly a lot for the referee to keep up with here. And Ivar's trying to rally this crowd, and I really don't know Eric and Ivar's true intentions inside of that ring. They are two men who are just gonna do what they want. You like him, you like him, you love him, you love him, you hate him, you hate him, and I don't think they care. And Ivar, using some of his own agility there to take out Ali, but finally Mustafa Ali makes the tag to Ricochet, but is it even enough? Ivar has certainly got the momentum in Viking Raiders territory, and into the ring post goes the one and only. And down goes Ricochet again. And what a tag team matchup this has been thus far, as Ivar is yet to even tag out, really hasn't even had the chance to tag out. Two count there on the one and only already. And Ivar setting his sights on Mustafa Ali. Wait a minute, Ivar may have just knocked out one half of the world tag team champions. And if Ali was legal, he may be getting the three count there, but taking his eye off the ball may have been the misstep that cost Viking Raiders this matchup. Ricochet with the tilt the world head scissors, and Ricochet is almost egging Ivar on to tag in Eric right now. And finally, I don't even want to call him fresh legs, because I, or excuse me, Eric and Ricochet have already gotten physical multiple times in this match, but finally both men are legal inside of this ring. And off the standing shooting star. Not enough. But one step closer to retaining the World Tag Team Championships. For the one and only, the human highlight reel of SmackDown, that being Ricochet, and a man who we have called the heart and soul of Friday Night SmackDown, and Mustafa Ali. Eric into the corner. Ricochet crashing and burning there. Now down goes to the outside. And wait a minute, Eric setting his sights on Ali, and again, the Viking Raiders trying to divide and conquer, but this time, the man on the apron was ready. Ricochet back in to try to take advantage of a downed Eric. Spinebuster by the one and only. Don't take his agility and his cruiserweight style as a one-trick pony, if you will. Ricochet's got some strength, and he ain't afraid to use it. And I think we know what comes next out of that one and only arsenal. Moon salt by Ricochet to retain the World Tag Team titles. Only a one count there. Eric getting the shoulder up springboard. Moon salt to the back. And Ricochet knows he's going to have to throw caution in the wind any means necessary to get the job done. Springboard Pele kick and Minneapolis is coming unglued for the champions right now. This is one hell of a World Tag Team Championship matchup here tonight as what has already been a fantastic backlash pay-per-view. Well, look at that, Ricochet was heading to the top rope. Eric tagged it, Ivar, and both men not getting what they wanted there. Ricochet obviously getting the worst of it. Crashing and burned, and there's that discus leg lariat again. But Mustafa Ali going to ensure that Ivar doesn't even get close to stealing the World Tag Team titles from the champions. Ricochet went for a pump kick of his own. Ivar, oh Jesus. Ivar went for the springboard. Ricochet wasn't home, but the referee caught all of that one. Uh, oh, wait, wait a minute here. We got a predicament. Ricochet's into the cover, but the referee is down and out. Ricochet just had Ivar, but no referee to count it. That is some scrutiny in this matchup. I mean, obviously, Ivar didn't mean to nail the referee with that springboard elbow, but he did nonetheless. Wait a minute, referee's back to his feet, and Ivar's got Ricochet in a precarious situation. And that may be all she wrote. Ali again to ensure that there's not even a one count on the challenger's behalf. Ricochet springs to his feet, and back and forth, this tag team matchup starts to go. Trying to steal the win over the Viking Raiders. Ivar's having none of it, and Ricochet takes him down. Senton there, as Ricochet just starts to throw anything he can. And taking Eric off the apron. 
fighting fire with fire. We saw the Viking Raiders go after the unlegal competitor a couple of times. Ricochet not able, or excuse me, I should say not afraid to meet a slap in the face with another. Sivar into the cover and Mustafa Ali again saves the day for the World Tag Team Champions. And what a matchup we are witnessing right now. I mean, these two teams are just going at it with their whole heart and soul for the World Tag Team Gold. As Ivar's into the cover, Ricochet gets the shoulder up. Ali in again, and I think Ivar had enough of it, but Ricochet, look at the arms here. What has Ricochet got in mind? Oh my goodness, look at the strength out of the human highlight reel. Trying to go almost for a submission hold. I don't think he can hold it for long. Just trying to mix it up here to take Ivar out of a position of victory. And a shooting star press once again. Ivar's been in for the majority of this matchup. It's got to be the worsened participant of the challengers here. A tag made to Mustafa Ali. Dual super kicks for the champions. And Ivar's got no choice but to roll to the outside to try to catch a breather. Meanwhile, Ali going out here, but a little bit of miscommunication. Ricochet sent Ivar into the ring, and obviously not what the champions had in mind. And Eric, or excuse me, Ivar gonna take advantage. But nonetheless, we are back to an even playing field. At least one on one inside of the ring. Eric's on the apron, Ricochet's down. Ali's heading to the top rope. Oh, five, four. To retain. No! Somehow, some way, Ivar gets the shoulders up. And there you hear the chance here in Minneapolis for tag team wrestling. We said it before, we'll say it again. You don't have to like the Viking, Viking Raiders, but this is what they do, man. Win, lose, or draw, they are gonna push their opponents to the absolute limit. And Ricochet and Ali proving to be battle-tested here tonight, at least so far. Moon salt from the heavens to retain an all-out chaos there to break things up. And I think the referee may have got hit again. And we find ourselves in a predicament with a down official for the second time, Phoenix Splash! But no referee! We need a damn ref out here, because clearly this one has got his eggs all kinds of scrambled as Ricochet takes Eric off the apron. My God, I don't even know what to say right now. So much action to keep up with in this tag team championship match. Early match of the year candidate as Ricochet hits the moonsault again. The referee a little slow there into this cover. And Ivar gets the kick out. Referee obviously doesn't have all the strength. At the first, he got knocked down by Ivar. I believe Ali might have caught him the second time. Recall me. Into the pinfall. Eric breaks it up. Man, first live premiere event of the season, and these two teams are not disappointing. Showing up and showing out. Ivar countered by Ricochet. Discus forearm, and the big man falls like London Bridge. Back to the top, Ricochet drops the elbow. But he's not done. Back to the top again. Does it a second time. And the lower back's gotta be crying for mercy right now. Ricochet, springboard, moonsault takes out Ivar. Jesus Louise is Ricochet is going to the top again. Somebody stop this man. Phoenix Splash. Holy hell. Ivar kicked out. You have got to be kidding me. Ricochet takes out Eric. Ali's down. One on one for one more moment. Recall me for a second time. Cover. That's it. Eric's too late. My goodness. I have no words after the tag team matchup we just witnessed here tonight in Minneapolis, Minnesota for the championship gold. Here are your winners. And still, world tag team champions, Mustafa Ali and Rick.
battle tested are the world tag team champions they came out tonight and they showed their heart they showed their soul they showed their intestinal fortitude and they left it all on the table to leave with the gold that they walked in with these two men these two cruiserweights make one hell of a team mustafa ali and the one and only ricochet remain your wwe world tag team champions Do you want access to a bonus Universe Mode episode every single month? Well, now you have the chance. Click the Join button down below and become a NOAA Nation Gaming channel member. Not only will you receive one bonus Universe Mode episode every single month, but you'll receive access to exclusive badges, emojis, discounted merchandise, and more. Become a Premium Pass channel member today and don't miss out on these exclusive perks. It is time for the five women elimination challenge and the WWE Women's Championship of the World is on the line. And here comes challenger number one, a former champion in her own right. The following contest is an elimination match and is for the Raw Women's Championship. Introducing the challenger from Columbus, Ohio, Alexa Bliss. Well, this matchup tonight and all five women in it has really been a game of chess over the last couple of weeks. Remember, it was the Raw after WrestleMania, the Raw that kicked off a brand new season. Becky Lynch defeated Natalia in one-on-one -on -one action. After that matchup, the women's champion Asuka ambushing both women, laying them out simply to send a message to the women's locker room. It was a few weeks later that Alexa Bliss and Liv Morgan teamed up and they took on Becky Lynch and Natalya in a successful victory which earned them their spots here tonight. And from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, Natalya! So a couple of recent losses for the Queen of Hearts, Natalya, but she bounced back in a big way this past Monday night on Raw, when she went one-on-one -on -one with the newest member of the Judgment Day, the Nightmare Rhea Ripley. It was a hard-hitting affair, credit where credit's due to both women, but in the end, Natalia locking in the sharpshooter, tapping out the Nightmare, and picking up the victory this past Monday night on Raw. Four worthy challengers in this matchup tonight, but of course the champion Asuka has been dominant for the better part of the last year. We have talked about in the past, only a about a month and change blemish on the record of Asuka when she lost the women's championship to Shotzi at Survivor Series, regained it on January 1st at the Royal Rumble, and she's been dominating ever since, including a win over this woman, Becky Lynch, back at WrestleMania. But the man gets another opportunity, and she's looking to make the most of it tonight here in Minneapolis. And from Dublin, Ireland, Becky Lynch. We talked about in recent weeks how Becky Lynch has changed up her look and seemingly changed up her attitude. That loss at WrestleMania really got in the mind of the man Becky. Becky Lynch has really seemed more focused as of late, a little bit more aggressive inside of the uh, inside of the ring. Excuse me. As we mentioned, she got that singles win over Natalia, and of course the two women came up short when they were forced to team together against Alexa Bliss and Liv Morgan. And obviously, I can see why that tag team didn't really pan out. Alexa and Liv, a lot of experience teaming up with each other over the last year. Becky and Natalia simply put together as a challenge test, if you will, to Bliss and Liv Morgan in the lead up to this Backlash pay-per-view. But nonetheless, all four challengers have been successful. They've fallen in their times, but they have all worked their way back to becoming challengers tonight. Top contenders for the gold. And we will see who's the last woman standing tonight at the Target Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And there's still one more challenger to come, but clearly the Empress of Tomorrow is tired of waiting. She wants to hit the ring, and she wants to make some noise tonight here at Backlash. And from Osaka, Japan, she is the Raw Women's Champion 
the Empress of Tomorrow has put down the likes of Bianca Belair, Shotzi. She even had a triple threat match last September against two of her challengers tonight, Alexa Bliss and Liv Morgan. We have seen Asuka Mo over Tegan Knox. We have seen her defeat some of the best of the best in the women's division. And as we mentioned, one-on-one -on -one with the man, Becky Lynch at WrestleMania, tapped her out in the middle of the squared circle in front of a jam-packed Raymond James Stadium on the biggest weekend of the year. Asuka dominating, intimidating, fearless inside of that ring. And there is a reason she has been the women's champion for the better part of the last 12 months. Of course, it was last May that she captured the women's Money in the Bank contract, which really propelled Asuka into this new era in her career. Which, not to keep reiterating ourselves, but there's only one word to describe the Empress of Tomorrow, and that is the D word, dominant. But here comes challenger number four, Liv Morgan. And from Elmwood Park, New Jersey, Liv Morgan. I wonder how Liv Morgan felt as she was getting ready to make her entrance, and Asuka just walked right by her to make her presence felt first. But it doesn't matter, at the end of the day, five women are gonna enter that ring, and if the chaos from the five-man elimination challenge earlier tonight told us anything, that's to expect the unexpected and to expect absolute carnage and mayhem from bell to bell. Same rules apply in this matchup. Pinfall or submission, the only way to be eliminated. No countouts, no disqualifications. Except this time around is for all the marbles. The WWE Women's Championship of the World. Asuka defends against four worthy challengers, Alexa Bliss, Liv Morgan, Natalia, and Becky Lynch. That is the prize that is at hand. Only one woman can leave the target center tonight with the gold wrapped around her waist. Who is it gonna be? The bell has sounded and we are underway. Asuka going right after the woman she defeated at WrestleMania, Becky Lynch. Liv Morgan, Alexa Bliss, obviously, Good friends outside of the ring, but you know those two women know love loss when it comes to championship opportunities. They will do what they gotta do to try to succeed here tonight. And as dominant as Asuka has been, this is no doubt her biggest challenge to date. Four challengers at once, elimination style. Asuka can be pinned first, she can be pinned last, but she's gotta be defeated at the end of the day to lose the women's title. And as great as these four women have been, fighting back and forth, as we mentioned, almost a game of chess between them over the last couple of weeks, isn't enough to take down the Empress of Tomorrow. We will find out in due time. Oscar and Becky have been going at it since the opening bell. Natalia, Alexa, and Liv splitting the difference between the three of them. Last woman standing is gonna leave the target center in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Sunday night, April the 16th, 2023, as the women's champion of the world. Meanwhile, Liv Morgan, wait a minute, but Asuka about to eliminate Becky there, but a shoulder up. There's Liv going after Alexa. Again, those two women may be tag team partners numerous times throughout the last year, but that all goes out the window tonight when the women's championship is on the line. Asuka going after Natalia. A lot of submission maneuvers in this matchup when you really think about it. Wait a minute, Asuka into the pinfall here. Will that do it to eliminate Natalia? Not just yet. Asuka, of course, has tapped out many, if not all, of her opponents with the Asuka lock. Natalia tapping out Rhea Ripley this past Monday night on Raw. We have seen Becky Lynch use her disarmor in recent months since her return to her advantage. Alexa and Liv, remember they defeated Becky and Natalia in that tag team matchup a few weeks ago. And it was really a hard fought win. Becky and Natalia, although not, of course, friends inside of that ring, tried to put their differences, differences aside divide and conquer over Alexa and Liv, but at the end of the day, it was a hard-fought win for those two women. Schoolgirl roll-up by Alexa was enough to get the victory on that night, and is really what earned them this opportunity in this five-woman elim elimination matchup. That's Becky, wait a minute, Becky's going for the disarmor on Alexa Bliss, and Alexa could be our first casualty here. She taps out, she's hitting the showers, but not just yet. Alexa able to take out the legs of Becky. Those two women with a long history with each other, Dating back to 2016, and what a DDT by Liv Morgan. Meanwhile, Asuka, pinfall on Becky, but she gets the shoulder up. 
Oh no, wait a minute, Natalia clearly studying the matchup from earlier tonight has brought a steel chair inside the squared circle. We saw how violent the five-man elimination matchup that kicked off the night was. Brock Lesnar coming out the victor, the new number one contender after tonight for the WWE Championship. We saw steel chairs, we saw those steel steps, we saw tables earlier tonight. And these women looking to take some pages out of the men's book. Meanwhile, Becky Lynch has eliminated Natalya. Becky Lynch using the manhandle slam. Down goes Natalya, and she is our first casualty of the five-woman elimination match. Asuka back inside the squared circle. Almost smart strategy by the Empress of Tomorrow. Let the other three women that still remain in this match fight it out at ringside, do the damage, be there to pick up the scraps. Again, Natalia eliminated. She's just trying to get to her feet right now to being laid waste by the man, Becky Lynch. Becky getting back into the ring as the tag team partners, Bliss and Liv Morgan, go out at ringside. Asuka now, leg lariat on Becky Lynch. I'm sure Becky would love to not only win the women's championship tonight, but specifically eliminate the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, from the equation and right the wrong from WrestleMania in her mind. But oh, Asuka has got something else in mind. Hip attack on Becky Lynch. And that may send Becky Lynch to the back for good. Not just yet. Almost our second elimination in this women's championship matchup as we are down to four at the current moment. A palm strike by Asuka. Wait a minute, Becky Lynch, Becky Lynch, nice counter there. She's got Asuka in a submission hold. Disorder on the Empress of Tomorrow. If Asuka taps out, no. Able to get out of it. Meanwhile, Liv Morgan trying to eliminate Bliss, but Bliss gets the shoulder up. And what a night of in-ring action it has been already. Here tonight in Minneapolis at Backlash. And it's been chaos in this women's championship match. And Liv Morgan bringing out the tables. Meanwhile, Asuka is going for the Asuka lock on Becky Lynch. The same maneuver that ended Becky Lynch's hopes and dreams at WrestleMania. She's got it locked in tight. And Becky taps. Becky Lynch has been eliminated. Becky Lynch not finding a way out of the Asuka lock and suffers the same fate as WrestleMania Sunday. And just in a matter of moments, we are down to three women. The table is set up precariously in that corner. Alexa Bliss, Liv Morgan, and Asuka, all that remain. One of these women's leave it tonight as your women's champion. A little bit of deja vu right now. You remember, back at the Judgment Day pay-per-view, September the 10th of last year, it was a triple threat on that night, one fall to a finish, and it was Asuka retaining the women's championship over Liv Morgan and Alexa Bliss. Now these three women find themselves as the final three in this five-woman elimination matchup. Two casualties still to go before we leave with a women's champion. Bliss down in the corner. Asuka working over Liv Morgan, and that table set up precariously in the corner, which was introduced by Liv Morgan a few moments ago. Becky Lynch eliminating Natalia. Asuka eliminating Becky Lynch. Who will fall to the waist side next? Nice counter by Asuka there, and a strong style forearm to the goddess of the WWE. Liv goes for a shot. Asuka with a reversal, and Bliss, wait a minute, double knees on Liv. Vintage Alexa Bliss off the moon salt. Going to eliminate her tag team partner here. Will that do it? No, Liv gets the shoulder up, and you see Asuka was allowing that all to happen. Lying in wait to see what the result of that pinfall was going to be, and now the Empress decides to strike. Full Nelson it was a butt buster there. We've seen it a few times in this match. Into the cover on Bliss for the elimination. No. Asuka grabbing a hold. Meanwhile, Liv Morgan at ringside. Trying to reintroduce, I should say, that steel chair and a shot right to the Empress of Tomorrow. And you might just need to get a little extreme to finally take down Asuka and Liv. Do a pull off the upset to eliminate the Empress. No! A nice combination of weapons and strikes by Liv Morgan, but it wasn't enough to keep 
the toughest woman in the division down. And now a chair shot to the back of the head. Liv Morgan is fired up. Liv Morgan's going to the extreme, all in the means of winning the women's title. And Asuka trying to take advantage there, but Liv Morgan is swinging that steel chair like her life depends on it. This thing is matching the chaos of your opening matchup tonight. And now Liv Morgan eats the table for Sunday night dinner, and Asuka down goes Liv through the wood. Into the cover for the elimination, and no. And the crowd here in Minneapolis appreciating the efforts of all of these women, even the two that are already eliminated. As Liv Morgan's lifeless body gets set over the top rope, Asuka gets rid of Bliss, and Asuka is ruling the square circle just as she has for the better part of the last year. Both the challengers down on the outside, and Asuka crashing and burning as Alexa Bliss got out of the way. The two challengers find themselves in the ring at the same time, and Bliss trying to take advantage of Liv, who just went through the table a few moments ago. And Asuka probably the smartest woman in this matchup right now. Just lying and wait on the outside, rest, recuperate, and pick your moment to strike. Liv is down, wait a minute, Asuka, or excuse me, Alexa Bliss is going to the top rope. Twisted Bliss on her own tag team partner, all in the means of winning the championship. There goes Liv. We are down to two, the goddess, the empress. One of these women are leaving with the women's title. Bliss off the Twisted Bliss, gets rid of her tag team partner, and now she is working over the Empress, grabs the chair, Asuka has other plans. And just tackles down Alexa Bliss. This has been a physical matchup, but who's got more left in the tank? As Asuka gonna go for those signature strikes on the goddess of the WWE, and there's one. And what a great matchup this has been. The women's championship means so much to everybody in this division, especially the woman who nails the hip attack on Alexa into the cover. That does it. The Empress of Tomorrow outlasts four challengers. Definitely, without a doubt, her toughest challenge to date. And somehow, some way, you can't knock the Empress because she finds a way to win once again and retains the championship of the world. Here is your winner. And still, the Raw Women's Champion, Asuka! Asuka continues her reign of dominance. Becky Lynch. Natalia, Liv Morgan, and Alexa Bliss all fall to that woman. The dominant, the intimidating, the empress of tomorrow, and most importantly, the WWE Women's Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, it is the SmackDown main event for the World Heavyweight Championship. John Cena is searching for number 17. But Drew McIntyre, the chosen one, realized his destiny back on WrestleMania Saturday, and he's got a stranglehold over the big gold belt that he ain't looking to let up anytime soon. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, we want to take a look at the tail of the tape between these two super heavyweights that are about to step foot inside the ring. Drew McIntyre with the size and strength advantage. John Cena with the experience advantage, but Drew McIntyre no stranger to the main event. And I want to point out here, McIntyre defeated Seth Rollins at WrestleMania, but John Cena defeated Drew McIntyre back on December 14th of last year. But who will be the better man tonight when the World Championship is on the line? The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the World Heavyweight Championship. It is your Friday Night SmackDown main event and the World Heavyweight title is on the line. And making his appearance first, the challenger, the number one contender, the former 16-time world champion, 
the man who is on the hunt for number 17, the franchise player of World Wrestling Entertainment, John Cena. As you saw in the tale of the tape, the last time Cena and McIntyre went one-on-one -on -one was on Friday Night SmackDown back on December the 14th of last year, just a few months ago. And John Cena defeated Drew McIntyre on that night. All these months later, McIntyre now finds himself as the champion. Cena finds himself as the challenger. And Cena has certainly been on the momentum side of things as of late. Has built some great momentum for himself on the road to tonight. Back on WrestleMania Sunday in February, John Cena defeated Robert Roode, a man who called him out for a contest on the grandest stage. John Cena, as we mentioned earlier tonight, defeated Austin Theory to become the number one contender for Minneapolis tonight. And just 48 hours ago, Cena hit the Nigerian giant Omas with quite possibly the biggest attitude adjustment we've ever seen in the history of Friday Night SmackDown. Off the top and down of the canvas, I still can't believe it, two days later. But Cena is locked and loaded. Cena is prepared as prepared can be. And he better be, because he's got a Scottish warrior, or as I like to say, a fire-breathing dragon. And of course, the world heavyweight champion standing across the ring. McIntyre had a tumultuous 2022 but he turned things around earlier this year by winning the Elimination Chamber back on January 22nd in Anaheim. And if you remember, who were the final two inside of that structure? Drew McIntyre and John Cena. McIntyre pinned John Cena on that night, which secured McIntyre's WrestleMania main event, which of course led Drew to defeating Seth freaking Rollins and becoming the new World Heavyweight Champion. So no shortage of history between the Scottish Warrior, the Chosen One, and the Franchise Player, the Challenger. But tonight is for all the marbles. Tonight is where it matters most. Past victories and past defeats go out of your mind and you focus on the moment. You focus on the matter at hand. And the matter at hand is the gold that is in the hands of Drew McIntyre. The big gold belt, the World Heavyweight Championship. This is your Friday Night SmackDown main event here at the Target Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's been a hell of a night, but we are far from over. The two all-stars of the blue brand set to lock horns for the most prestigious prize of Friday nights, the World Championship. McIntyre and Cena are ready. Let's send things down to the ring for your official pre-match introductions. Introducing the challenger from West Newbury, Massachusetts, weighing in at 251 pounds, John Cena! And his opponent from Ayr, Scotland, weighing in at 254 pounds, he is the World Heavyweight Champion, the Scottish Warrior, Drew McIntyre! The stage is set. It is your SmackDown main event here at Backlash. Cena McIntyre for the World Heavyweight Championship. Cena chasing number 17. McIntyre not looking to foresee his destiny go to the wayside anytime soon. Who is going to get the job done? McIntyre, Cena. The bell has sounded and we are underway for the World Heavyweight title. As we saw in the tail of the tape, and as we see before our very eyes, McIntyre with the size advantage, the height and weight over John Cena. Quite possibly the strength as well, but you can never count out the strength of John Cena, one of the strongest men we've ever seen in WWE, as he showcased just 48 hours ago against Omos. At the end of the day, McIntyre and Cena. I got a feeling this is going to be a war of attrition between these two men. We've seen both men go the distance in big match situations plenty of times throughout their career and come out on the other end as champions. 
McIntyre did it most recently at WrestleMania. The reason he is the World Heavyweight Champion tonight. And Cena get the job done and finally secure his 17th World Championship here in the WWE. That is the question at hand. And we're going to find out the result in just a matter of moments. McIntyre with the advantage so far over John Cena. And as this SmackDown main event here at Backlash progresses, I want to send a special thank you to everybody watching this at home. Thank you for joining us thus far for WWE Backlash, our first live premiere event of the season. As we mentioned at the top of the show, and as we'll say again, Sunday night, April the 16th, 2023, certainly going to go down in the history books. We are far from over as the World Championship is on the line and the WWE Championship still to be defended. And what a powerbomb by Cena into the cover again to win the 17th championship, not just yet. Cena has been to the top of the mountain 16 times. He has done it all in World Wrestling Entertainment. Money in the Bank holder. Royal Rumble match winner not once but twice. United States Champion. There's very few things that Cena does not have on his accolades, but all he cares about tonight is breaking that record. As McIntyre goes into the cover off the overhead throw to retain the title, obviously early to get a victory in this kind of a matchup. As we mentioned, we'll say it again, this is going to be a war of attrition. I do not see this one going down in just a matter of a few minutes. This is going to be who outlasts the other in the deep waters of battle. When all the marble, all the treasure is on the line, who is going to outlast the other in the end and walk away with the championship of the world? McIntyre sends Cena to the apron. Cena with a nice counter there. This is obviously going to be a power house versus powerhouse matchup. Cena again avoiding McIntyre. Whatever McIntyre's got in mind, Cena obviously, his wheels are turning. And McIntyre for the third time sends Cena over the top rope and just drags him back into the ring on his own accord and sends him down to the canvas. McIntyre having his way with the franchise at least for a moment. And now Drew going to show Cena in his mind how it's done. Power bomb and sits out with it with a cover to retain the championship and Cena gets the shoulder up again. You know, we discussed this matchup a little bit earlier tonight. And Austin Theory and Cody Rhodes were tearing down the house here in Minneapolis. You gotta wonder if Cody Rhodes, now that he has defeated Austin Theory, is gonna be eyeing up the world championship. Or is Austin Theory gonna be trying to weasel his way back into the number one contendership? Or is somebody else on Friday Night SmackDown looking to step up after backlash? All remains to be seen. Cena taking McIntyre down with that monkey flip. Followed up, but wait a minute. Cena go to the outside. Taking out the bigger competitor. Cena doing what he's got to do tonight to outlast Drew McIntyre and win the world championship. Obviously going high risk, high reward. Not usually in the repertoire of John Cena. We have seen him add many moves to the arsenal. Many moves to that quote unquote five moves of doom over the years, but Cena throwing caution in the wind like that, especially at this age, at this length in his career, just shows you the heart of John Cena, the will to win, and how much he wants to become champion. McIntyre heading back into the ring, trying to outlast Cena. Oh, wait a minute, Cena, I think may have been watching that Theory and Rhodes match earlier. Same suplex, same position, out of the ring and to the floor. John Cena taking a move out of Cody Rhodes' book. I think he had his eyes locked on that contest earlier tonight in preparation for tonight. Able to power Drew McIntyre, the obvious bigger competitor, near damn near 300 pounds over the top rope and down to the floor. And you see Cena, no waste of motion, got the champion back through the ring, followed it up with another power bomb, but McIntyre only allows a one count. That just shows the strength of McIntyre and a Glasgow kiss to Cena. And John Cena, his lights may have been turned off for good. McIntyre into the cover, off the Glasgow kiss, but Cena gets the shoulder up. John Cena getting brought to his feet. His body's there, but nobody's home. And Cena gets laid out with the Claymore kick. McIntyre to retain the championship, not just yet as Cena gets the shoulder up. McIntyre went for the kill off the Glasgow kiss. He hit the Claymore and somehow John Cena survived. We said this was gonna be a war of attrition and John Cena 
just took Drew McIntyre's best maneuvers out of the hat and threw him out the window. Cena's gonna continue to fight, and Cena's not gonna go down until he is satisfied with victory. McIntyre whips off the challenger, there's an elbow. Going basic, but going effective. Cena may have got the shoulder up, and as he sends McIntyre over the top rope, you gotta wonder if the lights are on, but is anybody home? As John Cena got his bell wrong moments ago, and yeah, he's got the adrenaline pumping right now. He's fighting Drew McIntyre, but is Cena gonna be able to outlast when this thing gets in a championship round? When we enter deep waters for the world heavyweight title in your SmackDown main event. Hip toss takes out the champion, drops the elbow. And Cena's gotta keep this going, he's gotta keep the momentum here in his corner. Cannot allow Drew McIntyre to get back control. He already got hit with a Glasgow kiss. He already got his bell wrong off the Claymore. He could not afford more offense like that from McIntyre, but Cena drops the elbow from the top. And Cena just trying to muscle up the bigger competitor and drops him with the close, or excuse me, the drop kick there. And Cena's trying to rally Minneapolis, Minnesota to the C-Nation corner. And you see McIntyre starting to feel the effects. And Cena muscles him on the top rope. McIntyre able to avoid disaster. You gotta wonder if Cena was going for that attitude adjustment he hit to Omos 48 hours ago. Nonetheless, off the reversal neck breaker, McIntyre not able to keep Cena down. But I wonder if that attitude adjustment is what Cena had in mind. The maneuver that kept down the Nigerian giant 48 hours ago. McIntyre clearly had it scouted, but Cena continues pressing forward. McIntyre gets the shoulder up again. What a hell of a main event this has been. SmackDown main event, of course. We still got the hell in the cell to be lowered on behalf of Monday Night Raw and the WWE Championship still to be decided tonight in Minneapolis. Nobody does live premieres, nobody does pay-per-view quite like the No Nation Gaming YouTube channel as McIntyre back inside the squared circle to lay out the challenger. Now wait a minute here, look at McIntyre. I believe he was going for a Claymore kick, but not watching his, or not a Claymore kick, a Kimura lock, but not watching his ring awareness. And Cena saved by the ropes there. McIntyre obviously trying to find an ace in the hole and do whatever he can to defeat John Cena and retain the world championship. Cena kicked out after the Glasgow kiss and the Claymore. You gotta wonder if McIntyre's racking his brain right now, trying to figure out what he's gotta do to keep the challenger down tonight. Cena get back into this matchup and both men going for a clothesline, but McIntyre's the successor. Hits two of them, and there's a third. And into the cover to retain. I got a feeling that's gonna do it, no! Cena survives again, and you see it's starting to get to Drew McIntyre. McIntyre questioning his efforts right now as John Cena continues to press forward for the World Heavyweight Championship. McIntyre goes underneath. Gut wrench suplex sits out with it, elects not to go for the pinfall, however. Cena just trying to use the ropes to get to his feet. And here comes McIntyre with another clothesline to squash the challenger in the corner. McIntyre's having his way, but there's a reversal by Cena. And Cena just throws his body at the champion. This is what John's got to do to get back into this matchup. If anybody knows how to fight from underneath and come out on the other end, victorious, it's the franchise player. He's made a career out of proving people wrong. As Cena may about to be coming up short tonight as McIntyre still not able to put the number one contender away. Cena just trying to get to his feet. As McIntyre's continuing with this offense here. And Cena, look at him, still not being able to be kept down. And McIntyre continuing to go to the well with what works. Power bomb. And how many falls, how many slams can Cena take? Oh no. McIntyre's going for Claymore number two. Cena avoids it. Cena gets out of the way. Oh no. Attitude adjustment by John Cena. Into the cover. He might have just caught McIntyre. No. Mamma Mia, McIntyre kicks out. 
What a night. What a match. McIntyre went for Claymore number two. Cena avoided it and immediately struck with the attitude adjustment after minutes on minutes of high offense from the champion. And McIntyre's down on the outside. Cena's heading to an uncharacteristic position. Cross body by Cena. And oh no, John Cena. He's gonna have to dig down deep. Clear it off the announce table. The franchise clearly, his gears are spinning right now. And he's obviously questioning what he's gonna have to do to keep the world champion down after McIntyre survived that attitude adjustment. This is what the World Heavyweight Championship is all about. This is what the big gold belt means to these two all-stars of SmackDown. And Cena, it hits the axe hammer on McIntyre. The count broken on the referee. Now McIntyre up against the announce table again. And John Cena using it as a weapon as McIntyre's bell rung, at least for a moment. Cena's just throwing Drew McIntyre all around ringside. And this may be Cena's best shot at the current moment to try to keep down the world champion as he comes off the apron. And Cena may have hurt himself off that maneuver, but obviously trying to do anything he can to win the championship here. Referee at a count of six. Count of seven. Cena obviously can't win via count out. I think he knows McIntyre has got his wits about him. And this matchup continues on inside the ring as Cena on the momentum driver's seat right now takes out McIntyre. Cena heads to the top rope. The world champion is just trying to get off those spaghetti legs. Cena's a little far out. I don't know if I would risk this. Not enough. John Cena clearly miscalculated that axe hammer. To be counting his lucky stars that McIntyre still was not aware of his position inside the ring. And Cena heading back up to the top rope. I think he wants to make up for that misstep. He, do oh, he does not. Goes for the crossbody. McIntyre counters. And Cena may have costed himself. They don't call it high risk, high reward for a reason. That time there was no reward, and it handed the momentum of this matchup back to the world champion on a silver platter. Oh my goodness, McIntyre sending John Cena for a ride. And if that's not a knockout blow, I don't know what is. Cena gets out again. And somehow your Friday night SmackDown main event here in Minneapolis continues. McIntyre and Cena leaving it all inside of that ring, fighting tooth and nail for the most prestigious prize in the blue brand, the World Heavyweight Championship, a title that's been held by the American Dream Dusty Rhodes, a title that's been held by Hulk Hogan, 16 times by Ric Flair, the Icon Sting, Triple H, the Animal Batista, and so many more. Cena sends McIntyre over the top rope and down to the floor again. Cena knows he can't win via countout. He knows he can't win here at ringside, but obviously his wheels are turning and he's trying to do anything he can just to keep McIntyre down and off the top rope. Almost Cactus Jack-esque as Cena comes off the top and drops an elbow all the way to the floor of this arena on the stardom of the world champion. And somehow McIntyre still breathing signs of life, but not for long. Cena with a slam on the outside. Referee at a count of three. Would hate to see a double count out in this situation. I mean, we're in the midst of an amazing main event as Cena's once again, oh no, set his eyes on the announce table. McIntyre! Attitude adjustment through the announce table! John Cena has come unglued here in Minneapolis and is willing to put Drew McIntyre's livelihood at risk to become a 17-time World Heavyweight Champion. McIntyre survived the attitude adjustment earlier. He just got leveled with one through the announce table, but somehow the World Champion is still walking on his own two feet. Back inside the ring, Cena whiffs a clothesline. McIntyre, look at the muscle. Belly to belly. 
Foley and Cena got sent for an amusement park ride. Into the cover, Cena's foot near the ropes there, but referee's gonna count it. Cena gets the shoulder up. And Cena not being able to capitalize off that attitude adjustment may have cost him. McIntyre's got a fire under his ass right now, and if Cena doesn't get up and put out that fire, his chances of becoming world champion are literally gonna go up in smoke. Here comes the haymakers of the franchise. Cena, one of the best brawlers in WWE history, as McIntyre's down, and Cena trying to follow it up, there's an elbow. Cena gets the champion to his feet. What has John Cena got in mind as he sends McIntyre into the corner again? And up top goes the world champion, and my goodness! Doesn't get more brutal than that. Nothing fancy, nothing pretty, just a fall from the heavens as Cena shoves McIntyre off the top rope and down to the floor of the target center. And again, Cena knows he can't win this match by count out, but he's willing to at least stretch to that, stretch that count to at least a nine to get Drew McIntyre down and out here as McIntyre's back into the ring. And up and over he goes again. Cena just trying to stay fired up, stay into this matchup. McIntyre, so much wear and tear on the bodies of these two competitors. McIntyre needs the ropes to get up. Cena here trying to outrun the world champion, and then he does. We said this was going to be a matchup of powerhouse versus powerhouse, and that's exactly what it's been. McIntyre off the counter, sends Cena to the corner. Now Drew sends Cena to the corner again. What a kick to the chest! outsmarted the challenger and John Cena may be gasping for air right now as McIntyre sends him for another slam. And we are still moving in this world championship match. McIntyre to the submission hold on Cena. Cena's dangerously close to the ropes for McIntyre's chances but Cena so unorthodox in his mind right now can't even get his wits about him. Can't even reach for the ropes. He's going to elect to try to power out of this submission hold. And that he does at least for a moment. And a right hand by Cena. A left. A left. A body shot. One to the jaw. Cena's just going for the haymakers. An old school bare knuckle brawl. A Glasgow kiss by McIntyre for the second time. No shot. Cena's getting up. No shot. Cena got the shoulder up again. The World Championship matchup is far from over. How the hell are these two men still got lungs, or still got breath left in their lungs, I should say, as Cena comes off the top, trying to take all the air out of Drew McIntyre. Cena's has survived two Glasgow kiss, a Claymore, and now drops the leg off three high-risk maneuvers to win the world title, but McIntyre kicks out. The exhaustion setting in here at ringside, but I cannot imagine the exhaustion that is setting in for champion and challenger as we are nearing 20 minutes in this world championship affair. McIntyre trying to get to his legs on the outside. Cena's in the ring just awaiting the champion, trying to pick his spots, not waste any momentum, waste any breath. Down goes the champion again. Now, wait a minute, what has Cena got in mind? He's got his eyes locked on McIntyre. McIntyre barely to his feet. Luthez by Cena. John Cena going old school in the world champion right now, and Cena trying to rally. But is he trying to get himself fired up or not? McIntyre with a reversal. Claymore! McIntyre with the Claymore kick out of nowhere. Into the cover. That will finally do it. What a match for the World Heavyweight title. If you ever question the prestige, if you ever question what it meant to hold the big gold belt, look no further than the fight that these two men just withstood inside of that very squared circle. Winner. And still, World Heavyweight Champion, the Scottish Warrior, Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre proving himself 
worthy of being a world champion yet again. That was an absolutely unbelievable performance. And there is no shame in losing for the franchise John Cena tonight. He will live to fight another day, and I'm sure he is not done on the hunt for his 17th world title. But as for tonight, the moment belongs to the chosen one, just as it did on WrestleMania Saturday. McIntyre continues his destiny forward. Still, world heavyweight champion, the man of Friday Night SmackDown, the Scottish warrior, Drew McIntyre. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, it is your main event, Hell in a Cell. Loser leaves Raw. The WWE title will be decided when Matt Riddle and Randy Orton write the final chapter of a year-long story in your main event. At WrestleMania, Matt Riddle finally stuck it to the man who has caused him a year's worth of pain and agony, his former best friend, Randy Orton. After every trial and tribulation that the Apex Predator dished out, it was all worth it in the end. Matt Riddle survived and thrived through it all and became the new WWE Champion. The original bro's reign at the top has not been smooth sailing, and that's all thanks to the man who is hell-bent on getting back his former gold. Randy Orton wasted no time reminding Riddle that this year-long issue was far from over crashing him through a table and setting his sights on Riddle's new property. It was obvious that this war could only come to an end in one way, on one night in one oh-so-violent match. Hell in a Cell. To ensure this match went off without a hitch, it was solidified that neither man could lay a hand on the other until April 16th, or else there would be serious repercussions. Randy Orton, being as cold-hearted as he is, found a loophole in this situation. He paid off a hungry and destructive street champ known as Solo Sokoa to ambush Matt Riddle and try to ensure that the original bro wasn't going to make it to Minneapolis. No matter what Riddle has been put through over the last year, through hell or high water, he has come out on the other side, still standing and still ready for a fight. Tonight is where it all ends. Not only is the WWE Championship at stake, but the added caveat as the loser of this match will be banished from Monday Night Raw. It's all or nothing for these two superstars. A year's worth of heartbreak, victory, failure, and all out wars come to an end. Randy Orton, Matt Riddle, the WWE Championship, Hell in a Cell. Let the violence begin. The following contest is a Hell in a Cell match and is for the WWE Championship. It is main event time, Sunday night, April the 16th, 2023. Target Center, Minneapolis, Minnesota. The first live premiere event of the season, WWE Backlash. And we are about to witness the final chapter in a year-long story between Apex Predator and Original Bro. But most importantly, between two former best friends. Randy Orton. That man right there. Or as I like to call him, that cold-hearted son of a bitch. Let anger, let frustration, let failure separate his relationship with his former tag team partner this time last year. Randy Orton kicked Matt Riddle to the curb, tried to end his career in a parking garage, but Matt Riddle came back for more. And you remember back in August of last year, 
August the 7th to be exact at Extreme Rules. Randy Orton and Matt Riddle went one-on-one -on -one in Falls Count Anywhere and how disturbing it was to watch on that night as Randy Orton used a sledgehammer on his former friend, RKO'd him on, on that very hammer and left him laying in a pool of his own blood. Randy Orton went on to become the WWE Champion. Randy Orton went on to have a winning streak over six months long. All the while, Matt Riddle fell towards a downward spiral. Luckily for Riddle, all the stars aligned. He bounced back and he won the 30-man Royal Rumble match on January 1st, which propelled him to finally face off with the man who swore him off for good, Randy Orton, back on WrestleMania Sunday in the main event. And that, of course, is where this story took another chapter when Riddle won the gold that is around his very waist, dethroning his former friend, taking away what meant the most to Randy Orton. Payback was a bitch, and Matt Riddle solidified that once and for all. But tonight, it's all or nothing. Not only is the WWE Championship on the line, but to ensure that the story finally ends here in Minneapolis, the loser of this matchup will be banished from Monday Night Raw. There is so much riding on the line in the most dangerous structure known to mankind. Hell in a cell. And although Riddle was victorious at WrestleMania, although he is the champion, I would have to say Randy Orton is the favorite in this matchup. He won this very Hell in the Cell match back in November at Survivor Series to win the WWE Championship. For Randy Orton, will history repeat itself tonight in Minneapolis, Minnesota? Introducing the challenger from St. Louis, Missouri, weighing in at 250 pounds, the Viper. And his opponent from Las Vegas, Nevada, weighing in at 216 pounds. He is the WWE Champion, the original pro, Matt Riddle. It is a big fight feel, all or nothing in your main event. The WWE Championship, a spot on Monday Night Raw, and leaving this story of former friendship behind. The final chapter will be written in blood inside Hell in a Cell. And we are underway here at Backlash. This is Matt Riddle's first time inside the squared circle. Oh, wait a minute, Randy Orton trying to end this thing early. Oh, gets the shoulder up. This is Riddle's first time inside the squared circle since he retained the WWE title on the Raw after WrestleMania against Sami Zayn. That, of course, was the night he was ambushed by Randy Orton and put through a table in that very ring. It was just a few weeks later that Matt Riddle, as you saw in the video package, was ambushed by the man Randy Orton, paid off to do so, the street champ Solo Sokoa. Riddle's been home nursing that fall picking the glass out of his back and nursing those injuries ever since. Riddle's back inside the ring tonight, and he is hell-bent on getting his pound of flesh against the Apex Predator as he is unloading on the number one contender right now. Speaking of number one contenders, you remember how he kicked off Backlash? The, the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar winning that five-man elimination matchup. So whoever wins this Hell in a Cell match, certainly with no easy task on the horizon, as the alpha male of our species is waiting for them. These two men need to be center focused on tonight. Riddle and Randy Orton. A year long story concludes here at Backlash. We talked about it earlier tonight. It was a year ago at this event that Riddle and Randy Orton lost their rematch for the World Tag Team Championships against the Viking Raiders. And really on that night after they already lost the tag team, th tag team titles, excuse me, and things were already on, Rocky Waters is where we really saw, or should say began to see the dissension between Riddle and Orton. 
And what a year it has been between these two men, the trials and tribulations that Randy Orton has put the WWE Champion through. Riddle has obviously come out on the other side, but tonight is where he can either silence Randy Orton for good, or Randy Orton is going to prove that he never needed Matt Riddle to begin with. Certainly a whole lot of bragging rights on the line inside this cell tonight as well as Orton drops Riddle with the DDT. I want to thank you once again for joining us here tonight at Backlash. It has been an extraordinary evening here on your first live premiere of the season. And we're going to find out tomorrow night on Raw the date and location for the next live premiere event. So be sure to tune in 5 p.m. Eastern time right back here tomorrow night for Monday Night Raw. Randy Orton and Matt Riddle continuing their fight inside Hell in the Cell. As we just saw between Drew McIntyre and John Cena, I expect this to be a war of attrition till the very end, especially with such, such high stakes, excuse me. The WWE Championship, a spot on Monday Night Raw, and all the bad blood between these two men. Orton muscles up Matt Riddle, hangs him up on the top rope. We have yet to see the cell structure come into play, but... I'm sure it's just a matter of time before we see these men go. Well, there you go, on the outskirts of the ring, Randy Orton, no stranger to Hell in the Cell, as he's looking underneath the ring, and he's using a weapon that we have seen multiple times throughout tonight in those five personal elimination matches. Orton's bringing out a table. Again, Orton used that very table. Not that very table. That table was broken into smithereens, but he used a table on Riddle, crashed him through it a number of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw to send a message that this story was far from over with. And obviously, Orton's looking to repeat history tonight at Backlash. And as we mentioned, Randy Orton, it was only back in November, Thanksgiving night, and him and the Rated R Superstar Edge went one-on-one -on -one inside Hell in a Cell at Survivor Series where Randy Orton won the WWE Championship. Orton has experience not only in the main event in general versus Matt Riddle, but he has way more experience inside Hell in a Cell as this is Riddle's first experience inside this cage structure. Riddle may be the champion, but Randy Orton's got to be the favorite tonight. Riddle's coming to this match. I'm going to take a guess here and say not 100% after everything he has been through over just the last number of weeks alone. And of course, as we saw at WrestleMania, injuries or not, Riddle will not slow down for anybody, including Randy Orton, as he uses that table against the man who introduced it. And I'm sure Riddle would love to even the odds with Randy Orton and make him feel the wood. And Orton looks to avoid it as he sends Riddle over the top rope and down to the floor. And Orton taking his time here, following the WWE Champion to the outside. Wait a minute, here we go, and here's where the brawl really starts to ensue inside Hell in the Cell as these two men are on the outside of the ring, and Randy Orton just rammed right into those steel steps. And the WWE Champion is on the chase. Randy Orton's on the run right now as Riddle's taking him for a ride around ringside. And Orton comes in contact with Hell in the Cell for the first time. This may be Riddle's first experience inside Hell in the Cell, but he's been surrounded by cages before and the most violent of fights. He's no stranger to the main event as well, and especially with so much bad blood, he is going to do everything he can to make sure he gets his pound of flesh versus Randy Orton tonight. Orton trying to fight back here, but these two men fighting tooth and nail, surrounded by the Hell in the Cell, and both men back and forth are eating the steel cage at the moment. As Riddle's going underneath the ring, introducing a steel chair, but here comes Orton. And Riddle with a blow. Sending Orton away again. And the champion back of the ring, he's got that steel chair. What is in the mind of the original bro here? Looks like he's going to wedge that chair into the corner. Riddle obviously came in with a game plan. I mean, Orton put him on the shelf for a couple weeks. Riddle had plenty of time to sit at home and think up strategy, think up ideas on how to inflict damage on the Apex Predator and try to come out on the other end of this thing as the WWE Champion. Little setting up that table, he's got that chair in the corner, sent Randy Orton down for a moment. Now Orton back inside of the ring, but Matt Riddle's right there to continue on the offense of his former best friend. Hit toss takes down Orton. We saw how Matt Riddle survived the brutality of the no-holds-barred match at WrestleMania. 
and obviously has got some new tick tricks of the trade. Randy Orton going head first into that chair that Riddle had propped up in the corner. Got him a two count there, but Randy Orton still got fight left in him. That Riddle has been through the worst of it. I'd least like to hope through this rivalry with Randy Orton, but Hell in the Cell is a whole different animal. And Randy Orton knowing the surroundings he is in tonight, being successful under a year ago at Survivor Series inside this structure for the WWE title, as we mentioned earlier, I gotta believe Randy Orton's the favorite tonight. But don't count out Matt Riddle. He's propped that table up in the corner. He's obviously got something in mind as he sends Randy Orton to the outside here. And Orton just has to use the chair. Oh my goodness. Has to use the cell to get to his feet. And you see how Riddle just kicked Orton back into the cell to make sure he had to inflict some punishment there. And Orton's on the run. Riddle's been in the driver's seat for at least the last minute or two, and Randy Orton's just trying to get back into things right now. Taking his time, letting Riddle come to him. But Riddle's gotta make sure he doesn't play right into the game plan of Randy Orton. And Riddle going back underneath the ring, and he's introducing a second table. Orton trying to sneak up on him here, but the original bro is ready, possibly more ready than Randy Orton. As Orton needs to sell again, but there's an elbow right to the jaw of the WWE Champion. And back inside the ring, Orton goes. Just got this feeling that Randy Orton's trying to egg Riddle on right now, trying to get him inside the ring, surrounded by these tables, as Riddle introduces another steel chair. I'm not sure what the Apex Predator is looking to do here, but Riddle's on his tail. I said it while he was walking to the ring, I'll say it again. Like him or not, it's a cold, hard fact that Randy Orton's a cold-hearted son of a bitch, and we have seen that on full display over the last year with his absolutely sickening actions to Matt Riddle. How many times did he try to end his career? Wait a minute, Orton into the cover. Riddle got the shoulder up, but did you see there? Randy Orton, or excuse me, Matt Riddle's been busted wide open. I'm not exactly sure when that happened. It had to be when he came in contact with the cell earlier, but nonetheless, Randy Orton's got him in a predicament looking for that signature. DDT for the middle buckle. Matt Riddle's down and out. And now that we know he's been busted wide open, Matt Riddle is in trouble inside Hell in a Cell. And Orton's not done. Normally, Orton likes to follow up that DDT looking for the RKO, but instead he's looking to inflict more damage using the steel chair on the WWE Champion. And into the cover goes Randy Orton to win the title. Not just yet as Riddle gets the shoulder up. Randy Orton wants back the championship. He lost on the grandest stage of the ball. Orton went for the RKO. Riddle avoided it, and a Superman punch for the bro, who now grasped the steel chair, and a blow right to the head of Randy Orton. And is Matt Riddle now feeling a sense of urgency? At some point, I believe again, when he got in contact with the Hell in the Cell, he got busted wide open. Randy Orton then, oh man! Orton getting sent off the apron, back first into the Hell in the Cell. So much to keep up with here in your main event tonight at Backlash. Nonetheless, Riddle still fighting, Orton still fighting. A war of attrition, who's gonna be the last man standing as Riddle's eyeing up that table. He wants retribution for the table that Orton put him through a number of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw. But Randy Orton leaning Riddle up against the rope. Now look at this, bouncing Riddle off. And a suplex in Riddle came in contact with the edge of that steel chair, which is all kinds of bent up as Orton goes for the cover. To win the title again in Riddle, Gets the shoulder up once again in this matchup, and Randy Orton starting to question himself. He hit that middle rope DDT, and now a DDT on the steel chair, and right back into the cover. The bloody forehead has got to be feeling that. Orton went for the RKO. Riddle avoided it, tried inflicting more punishment, but the WWE Champion, as Randy Orton has found out in the past, and he's getting reminded of tonight, Tough as nails, as tough as they come, is the original bro, Matt Riddle. Randy Orton on the chase, or I should say on the run, Matt Riddle on the chase, but Orton now got a grasp on the WWE Champion, but Riddle avoids it. Riddle does not want to feel the table again. 
couple of forearm strikes, a bunch of forearm strikes, Orton counters the fourth one. And now muscles Riddle up. Riddle counters. Riddle takes out the leg of the, I was said WWE champion, over the challenger. Matt Riddle's the champion. Randy Orton lost it at WrestleMania. Orton into the table again. And Matt Riddle finally gonna get some retribution. Suplex through the table. Randy Orton has made Riddle feel the one in the past, but tonight it's the champion on the hunt. But the Viper gets the shoulder up and rolls away from the rope, or to the ropes, I should say, to try to catch a breather. As Matt Riddle, though, has found himself as the apex predator, seeking his prey, which is Randy Orton. And Riddle's going to the top rope. Orton's down. Here comes a floating bro. But Orton got out of the way, and Riddle crashes and burns on the canvas. Matt Riddle's still fighting. Orton's still fighting. And you see Hell in the Cell starting to take a toll on these two combatants. Riddle has found himself in the same predicament he was at WrestleMania, rocking the Crimson Mask. Randy Orton is the aggressor at the moment. Looks at knock Riddle's lights out off the snake eyes. And the challenger just stomping out the heart of the WWE Champion. As if he hasn't done so enough over the last year. Riddle avoids the kick. There's another Superman punch by the bro. Riddle's got no problem having this thing be a fist fight till the very end. Riddle's got experience in that forte, and I'm sure if there's anybody who would love to punch in the face, Randy Orton is at the top of that list. Riddle setting his sights on that table, and Randy Orton goes head first with it. Riddle already put the Viper through one piece of wood. He wants to make it a dose here at Backlash. It wasn't only the table a few weeks ago on Raw, but you remember in the lead up to WrestleMania, the backstage brawl between these two men. Randy Orton suplexed Riddle through a table onto the concrete. Oh, wait a minute, Riddle's got Randy Orton lying on the wood of that table. The Viper in a precarious situation as the bro is heading to the top row. Frog splash through the table. The rib cage of both men has got to be crying for mercy. Riddle follows it up with a bro time. The fire under the ass of the WWE Champion may lead him to victory right here, right now, no. Randy Orton survives not one but two tables in this matchup. And the WWE Champion has now got to find another way. Or it may have survived two tables. I don't know if my voice is going to survive the rest of this live premiere. Nonetheless, the brawl continues on the outside of the ring. And they are kneeling this, nearing the hell in the cell again. And Randy Orton's own momentum just takes him down off that throw by Riddle. First a suplex through the table, then the frog splash. Not enough to keep Orton down. Randy Orton breaks the jaw of the WWE Champion right there. Now throwing a couple haymakers. Another one as Riddle eats the hell in the cell again. And again! Randy Orton is violent. Randy Orton is vicious. And Randy Orton had a no, knows how to use the hell in the cell structure to his advantage. Matt Riddle is down. He's got to get his wits about him now or never. The Viper will pick you apart and will strike at any given moment. Riddle may have avoided one RKO earlier, but you know Randy Orton's going to be looking for another one at any given second in this match. And the brawl continues. Riddle just again throwing Orton away. Oh, man, did you see that? I believe Riddle was going for a stomp. Orton caught the foot and whiplash Riddle right into the cell, I believe. And now Riddle eats the cell wall again. And oh my God! My goodness, Randy Orton just goring Matt Riddle through the hell in the cell wall. Riddle is down and he may be out for the count. Randy Orton 
is just trying to, I, I don't know, walk it off right now. I have no idea what the Vipers got in mind, but Randy Orton, the violence, the bad blood between these two men spills outside the structure, spills outside Hell in the Cell, and now the brawl has made its way throughout the target center. What a freaking fight for the WWE Championship for a spot on Monday Night Raw and for ultimate back bragging rights in this year-long story of former friends turned bitter enemies. We're up against the barricade, trying to fight to survive right now. And that's all these men can do. Is Rand oh my goodness, no. Randy Orton is scaling the side of the hell in the cell. And I don't want to remember the fall that Randy Orton sent Edge to last November. Randy, you, you hear it from Minneapolis, but Randy Orton, you remember back at Survivor Series in November, sent Edge through the roof of the hell in the cell, and I think he's going Matt Riddle, and Matt Riddle, maybe tougher than he is smarter, is gonna meet Randy Orton on top of hell. This is not good, this is dangerous. Oh no, I am I am very nervous right now for the WWE Champion and hell, even the challenger. Oh my God, Riddle, go to sleep. German, oh, German suplex on the cell. Listen, man, I, I know that, that roof can support, but it's really not supposed to. It's not meant to. I do not want to see even Randy Orton take a fall. It is dangerous, it is barbaric. There is a reason Hell in the Cell will change your career, quite frankly, change your life forever. Randy Orton goaded Riddle up, but right now Riddle's putting the whooping on his former friend, and that time landed on the beam of the cell. Oh my God, at least the cage, I guess, has a little bit of a give, but that beam is as, as hard steel as it comes. Randy Orton is all kinds of dazed and confused, or maybe not. And now it's Randy Orton being the aggressor. Drop kick on top of the cell. This is not good, as Randy Orton now is stomping each body part of Matt Riddle, which on top of that cell is only gonna hurt about 10 times worse, as if it wasn't already barbaric already. And Orange is trying to open up that wound of Riddle even more. Oh no, RKO! The RKO on top of Hell in the Cell! We said Matt Riddle was out for a pound of flesh, but the Viper is looking to bring home the ultimate prey tonight. Riddle avoided that very move earlier on in this matchup, but Randy Orton just struck with the three most dangerous letters in our industry on top of the Hell in the Cell structure. And yet somehow these two men are still swinging for the fences. Oh, oh no, 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 no. That you see, you see, uh, off that maneuver, that 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 wall right there, should be that that roof is, is starting to cave in. I, these two men got to get down, a, a fight in the ring, man. This is way too dangerous. I do not want to see a repeat of Survivor Series when Edge fell through the roof down to the canvas and basically wrote the final story of that matchup. Riddle trying to avoid whatever Randy Orton had in mind. Riddle just trying to walk it off right now. I know these guys are running off adrenaline. They're running off anger. They're running off the will to be WWE champion and ultimately defeat the other. But is it really worth this risk? Is the reward worth it in the end? Unfortunately, I think if you ask these two men, they are going to say yes, as they are dangerously close to the edge of Hell in the Cell right now. And I do not like where things are heading. Matt Riddle. Oh, that was a stiff knee to the elbow. But it dislocated the entire elbow of Randy Orton as he German suplexes Orton on top of the cell. Something's got to give. And hopefully it's not the roof of this freaking cage. As the fight, tooth and nail continues. Oh my God! Randy Orton! You have got to be 
kidding me? The, the spine buster just sent Randy Orton from the roof to the ring. I, I, I don't even know how to do Wait a minute, Randy Orton into the cover. Riddle kicks out. How is Randy Orton even moving right now? Adrenaline's the only word, but I gotta, I gotta say, after adrenaline wears off, these two men are gonna find themselves in a damn hospital bed. Randy Orton charged at Riddle. Riddle's spine buster countered Randy Orton, and Orton broke through the roof, back first, all the way down to the floor, to the canvas, to the ring, and now he's crawling for mercy right now. Matt Riddle's going under the ring. I don't know. Oh my goodness. Riddle has now got the sledgehammer, the weapon that has been welded many times throughout this rivalry. And the same weapon that Randy Orton used on Matt Riddle to put the final nail in their friendship back on August the 7th of last year. Matt Riddle never forgives and never forgets. Referee better get out of the damn way because Matt Riddle's on a rampage. Matt Riddle has been thinking about this moment. Not only since Randy Orton put him on the shelf, but since Randy Orton used that very hammer against his former friend last August in Seattle. WrestleMania was just the beginning. And I think Matt Riddle is looking for an end. The sledgehammer, the kick. And Matt Riddle is looking for that chokeout submission hold that he has used for success many times. Or it's passing out, or it's passing out, or it taps out. It is all over. It is all over. The year long story finally writes its final chapter in the most barbaric, the most brutal way possible. And after everything we just witnessed, Matt Riddle survives Hell in a Cell. These men will never be the same. Randy Orton not only is walking away without the WWE Championship, but he will be banished from Monday Night Raw. And after a year of heartbreak, after a year of trials and tribulations, Matt Riddle finally puts Randy Orton in the past. Matt Riddle survives Hell in a Cell and ultimately gains bragging rights over his former best friend. Matt Riddle retains the WWE Championship. Thank you for joining us for your first live premiere of the season here at WWE Backlash. An amazing night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Face on when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back. I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat. Gonna see me rise, you can hate on that. I don't play both sides, doing me no cap. I'm a rock.